You're gonna be just fine. I just talk. You know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining me, as always, is the ever-quotable Jay. You gotta see the shape of this fucking guy that just walked in. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Hi. Here again. Woo! And special guest, David Howard Thornton, also known as Art the Clown and the Joker, to some of you. Hmm. How you doing, David? <laughs> <laughs> that was my horrible attempt at doing a horn sound. <laughs> I'm doing good. It worked out pretty well. I was laughing. I, I was watching a thing earlier today where uh, you honk the horn in uh, Jamie Madrox from Twisted's face. <laughs> and that yeah. cracked me, me up. Uh, Kenneth and I have been listening to Twisted for 20 plus fucking years at this point. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah we, we just partnered up with them to do some merchandise and stuff like that, too. Yes, I, I saw that. I was looking at the shirt earlier today. It looked very mm-hmm. nice. I was like, I think I might have to pick that up. Yes. Um, yes. yes. So before we get into it, we're still going to do what we always do so everyone can get used to names and voices. Jay, how have you been? Uh, I've been okay. Work is, is slowed down, which has allowed me to catch up and not be so stressed. Um, but yeah, just the, the regular stuff. Okay. Did you watch your Snyder Cut yet? I did all four hours in one sitting. One sitting. Ooh, wow. Nice. Did you like it? Was it good? I loved it. It was fantastic. Oh. They they did right by my man Flash though, which is ninety percent of it. No, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh Kenneth, how you been? Um I've been doing okay, getting over being sick. I think my voice may still sound a little off. Um got my bike back on the road, so I'm gonna be Harley in it up here real soon. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I am two episodes away from being finished with Vikings all the way through. There you go. I'm more... It, it, let's talk about your giant kidney stone, Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That I thing don't break that up. was almost the size of a fucking penny. Oh, no. And you pissed it out. Yeah, it oh, was huge. no. Took me two months to pass it. Oh God! Like he oh sent us, he God. sent us a picture of it next to the last four he or last three he or last four you had, right? Yeah. And and I was oh, like, okay, those other four are about the size of the the four that I've passed in my life. And I was just like, I need you to put this next to a penny so that I can mm-hmm. see the size of this thing because I just can't believe that came out of your dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who, if. If either one of you guys messages David on Facebook or whatever, feel free to send him the picture. <laughs> uh, I mean, God. because it's huge, dude. Oh, my God. That's horrible. I, I had one of those way back when I was a teenager during a snowstorm, and that was just, God, that's the most painful thing I've ever dealt with. Yeah, it is. it is. I've had appendicitis, and uh, I'll tell you this. Appendicitis don't hurt as bad as a kidney stone does. It hurts to breathe. It yeah. hurts to live when you have a kidney stone, yeah. honestly. Oh, God. It's just, oh. And oh. then on the Monday, right, I passed it Tuesday morning. The Monday before, I had to deliver and uh, I had to deliver four hours away from where my job is. Oh. So I was in the truck driving the four hours in pain the whole time. And I couldn't take any of the major pain medicine because I was driving. And so, yeah, I was basically just having to deal with it the whole day. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, mm. uh, well, okay. they say that's like the closest you know men will ever experience to childbirth. So I'm like, ladies, I have all the respect in you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and uh, David, how have you been? What have you been up to? I've been good. I'm on a little bit of break from filming right now while they're uh, setting up the new location and going over fight choreography and stuff like that for what we're about to do. So is that I've been for killing a stream? For stream, yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. I very, so. I, I was looking at that and I was like, because eh, your name's just player two, but you're high up in the credits. So I was just mm-hmm. like, well, that's going to be very interesting to see how that works out. Plus, I, I want to see a movie that you talk in. Right. I actually don't talk in this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, you, I know. <laughs> you talk in the Dark Offerings, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I do. okay, I have that to look forward to then. Um, yeah, you'll probably be like, oh, God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you're going to start talking like Mark Hamill, then you're pretty spot oh, yeah. on. 
Um, <laughs> You'll see. Okay, so been enjoying a little mini vacation from from filming. Yeah. That's good. Have yeah. you been watching or playing anything? Yeah, I've been doing both. I, I've been uh, playing a lot. of. I just finished playing the new Hitman game this afternoon. So I, I enjoy those games so much. I, I'm big into stealth and espionage and all that kind of stuff. So I love the Hitman games. And then I've been watching a whole lot of um, One Piece and Supernatural. So, Well, Supernatural, that's up Kenneth's alley. I, I, got, a, I got like Such halfway through show. the series. Yeah. I'm I'm on the fifth season right now, so I'm I'm really enjoying it. Oh, but I just thought about that because One Piece is also like a, a huge series. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm like about four hundred and fifty some odd episodes in so far, and I'm I God is so good. <laughs> oh, because that, that that's that's also a huge, just a massive undertaking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say the same thing about Supernatural. That's the reason why I still haven't finished it. I've been watching Supernatural for years, and. My personal opinion is the logical closure point would probably be right around where you're at. Mm -hmm. But since they ran, was it 13 seasons? 15. 15 seasons. And each season, other, aside from the one where the uh, Screenwriters Guild, I think, was on strike, yeah. um, they're all like 25 episodes long or something like that. I yep. can't remember exactly. And so, I mean, it's just, and they're all an hour long. And so trying to trying to get through them all and trying to keep up with everything, man, eventually I just had to take a break because I think I went through, I think I'm in like season 10 now, and I went through the first seven seasons binge watching them. Yeah. And after that, I was just like, okay, I got to take a break. <laughs> wow. Um, it's, it's good, though. It's just like, I understand from my roommate, who's a huge fan, that's why he's like, you got to watch this, dude. You got to watch this. You'll love it. He, he's like, it, it, they wrap it up very well, he says. So I'm like, that's that's pretty cool. That sounds like you and I, Kenneth, it. where we're yeah. like, if you watch this show, I'll I'll watch this one. Uh huh. Mm. That's how I got through Game of Thrones. And that's how I got through like <laughs> five seasons of Sons of Anarchy. I, I got through the last season of Game of Thrones with a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> we all did. Yeah. Oh, My mom just finished you... Sons. Uh, I haven't watched that one yet. All right, that's probably gonna be another one I have to watch too because I understand that's a really good one. Well, each season's only like 10 episodes long, 10 or 11 oh, okay. episodes long. So you, my mom ran through it in like two weeks. That's good. That's cool. Um, so I, I like to take my time, though, so I, I don't binge watch everything in one weekend. I, I like to just spread it out over days so I can really fair. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and as for me, I'm doing good, everyone. I got my cat back. Cass is Woo! back. He's nice. behind me asleep. Oh. Uh, being fat, I gotta trim his nails though, cause this little clawy bastard. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> eh, he's pretty good. It's a two person job, but he's he's mm -hmm. pretty good at getting them trimmed. Um, oh, that's good. I have been playing Bravely Default Two on the Nintendo Switch, cause I love my turn based JRPGs. Cause I suck at games, but I don't suck at games where I don't have to act quickly. <laughs> um, other than that, I watched uh, Good Omens on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Fucking fantastic was that oh, show. Yeah. yeah. And other than that, I've been... I don't know what else. I went and saw Jaws in theaters again because it's a perfect movie. Oh. So, yeah. there's that. Um, but other than that, same old, same old with me. Uh, but we are here today because uh, Terrifier 2 is in editing right now. Yes. In fact, the director posted a couple of days ago, a week ago, something like that, Damien Leon posted that uh, he's got about a rough cut of about an hour and a half, and he thinks the movie's going to be two hours, which I'm all for. Give me two hours of Terrifier. Ooh, for real. I'm, I'm for it. We're going we're gonna to talk about Terrifier. But before we get into Terrifier and Terrifier 2, um, I want I want to get to know this man that we have in front of us. <laughs> let's let's talk to to David here, because uh, I I've, I've found some interesting things I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, first off, I saw an interview where you talked about five of your favorite horror movies in no particular order, mm -hmm. and now I'm kind of curious if one I want to find out what uh, you would add to this list. Maybe there's some new modern movies you would like to add to this list, but I uh, also want to point out how four out of these fives are all from the 70s, which backs my theory that the 70s had the best 10 out of 10 perfect horror films. Yeah. So, with that, we have Jay's uh, favorite, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. Yeah, that is my favorite. 
<laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's, it's just like that's the movie where everything just really seemed to come together for that franchise. It's just boom. It was so good. I'm notoriously against the franchise. I only like part two. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've had many debates on this show about it. Uh, but yeah, you also I probably have to say part two is my favorite as well. Yeah, part two is just oh, fantastic. The the like I know people like to say it's the the gay one, which I'm fine with that. That gives it a more subtext and interesting perspective. But mm -hmm. if you don't want to look at like that way, we also said when we did our uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three versus Friday the Thirteenth Part Three uh, Horror Coliseum episode, you could then turn and look at a Nightmare on Elm Street as a completely psychological thing as just him battling with his inner demons. You don't necessarily have to make it gay, though, honestly, mm -hmm. let's be honest, the screenwriter admitted it, and to me, it makes the movie better because it gives it more of an interesting subtext. Mm -hmm. uh, but you could also look at it as psychological, someone dealing with either, uh, not necessarily split personality, you don't have to go that far, but even someone dealing with like uh, bipolar and having to deal yeah. with wild, crazy mood swings. Um, you also said The Omen... Yes. Great movie, great movie. Uh, that decapitation scene in that fucking oh, movie. so good. Oh, so good. Uh, Just then, boom, it hits you. <laughs> it really does. Then we have Kenneth's favorite movie, The Exorcist. <sighs> Yes, man. You just went up another point in my cool book. <laughs> <laughs> the cool book is filled. Um, <laughs> then you have the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. which is also another masterpiece. And then topping off that with a, another masterpiece of the original 1979, Halloween. Oh, yes. somebody's favorite movie wasn't in his top five, Jerry. It uh, it wasn't, but <laughs> my Which is that? The, the other two guys were... Yours wasn't. Yeah, Jaws is still the greatest movie of all time. I don't care what anyone oh, says. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that's Damien's favorite. That and um, Lost Boys. Yes. Nice. Uh, I, I was, when I was watching an interview, I think he was actually applying your makeup. He talked about uh, Jaws, and he also talked about uh, watching the Scream Greats uh, Tom Savini series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those wow. movies are awesome. If you can get your hands on them, everybody should watch the screen great so those movies are great yeah so with that being said that, that that's a pretty strong list what movies would you add to it like whether it's old ones you found or modern ones what's a couple of movies you would like to add to the list of hey art the clown says watch these fucking movies okay um some are still going to be classics i i love the original child's play um, I would add Scream to it. Oh, well, I, we'll be I think up that's a Scream two think, here in a bit. Oh yeah, I, I think Scream that that whole entire, the, the, especially the original trilogy, that's a great way just to introduce people to slashers. That's how really I was introduced to slashers because it, you know it's, it makes fun of slashers, but it also is a slasher itself. So it's 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 a lot of has a lot of good humor in it and self-referential humor in it, which I enjoy. So um, I would say also um, the original Saw, I think, did wonders for, you know, um, it, for a low-budget independent film originally. I was blown out of the water the first time yeah. I watched that movie. The, the, the ending to it blew me away. I was like, holy shit, I did not realize that he was on the floor the whole entire time. I was like, that's brilliant. Oh my I stood God. up, I was watching it, and I was on the couch, and uh, we were sitting there watching it, and when that happened, when he stood up, I, I stood up, I was like, oh my God, that is awesome! Yeah, I would. Oh, that I loved that. Then I would say some more of the modern stuff I liked. Um, I really enjoyed The Babysitter. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I liked how they took the, the whole um, idea of, you know, your typical slasher you know, heroes, you know, the jock, the cheerleader, the, the, the nerd, all that. And they make them the bad guys, which I thought was kind of cool. And it was also kind of like, you know, a, a horror version of Home Alone in some ways, too, which was kind of fun. And plus it had like, a lot of great humor in it. And then I would say also uh, really enjoyed Ready or Not recently. Very that movie fun. was great. Mm -hmm. uh, Haunt, I really enjoyed a lot. Haunt I was actually was, surprised at that. 
Haunt was good. I like out of mm-hmm. the whole because at that time there was a lot of movies of that style coming out with like Hellfest, and there was another yeah. one too. And I thought I kind of thought Haunt was the best out of all of them. I did too. I, I think it, it handled haunt, the Haunt scene in a more realistic manner than the other ones did. I'm like Haunt was like actually going to a real haunt. It wasn't some big flashy, you know, Disney version of a haunted house that you go with this is like this is the type of haunted house you would go to in every town right so i thought that was really cool so that made it scarier in that way because it was more believable that way um i also really enjoyed final girls which i thought was a had put a nice twist on the slasher genre as well super underrated movie does not yeah, get super talked underrated. about enough. Uh, I, I thought it was brilliant. Still How, waiting for my sequel on that one. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my god, I would love that. And then um, I, I haven't watched it yet, but I, I'm looking forward to. I'm going to go watch it next week with a friend. It's Psycho Goreman. I've been hearing wonderful things about. Super fun. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Loved with that. it. Also, yeah. you should check out um, Promising Young Woman. Okay. I just watched that one and. I was fucking blown away by the ending of that movie. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you, especially if you like um, this run of, well, females have always had a, a great place in horror with, with the idea of the final girls, even though yes, there's a lot of tits and ass and all that, but the final girl overcoming it and being like being towards the end. Uh, but here lately with things like final girls or tragedy girls, and now, like, mm-hmm. oh, Tragedy Girls was good too. Yeah, Tragedy Girls fantastic. Yeah. Uh, these movie kind of putting the women at the actual forefront and not necessarily making them the victim, but a, a huge player in the game. Yeah, uh, really, really fucking dug promising young woman. Oh, well, kind of like you know it. with uh, Happy Death Day. You know, I, I enjoyed that too, and had that whole, whole kind of thing there too with it. You know, so it's like. Did didn't but, like the sequel though. Didn't, the sequel oh, wasn't really. I like the sequel, but I didn't look at the sequel as a horror film. That's true. It's not. Yeah, I haven't even watched the sequel. It's very hit or miss with people. Um, mm-hmm. I I enjoyed the sequel, but but I went in there. I knew it wasn't a horror film going into it, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna look at this as a different. It's more like you know, you know, a time travel type of movie in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Yeah. With horror elements. Great picks there. Now we're... Hello, kitty cats. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Fi- I, cats are always allowed to interrupt so, us. So, listen. S- side story. Did you know that uh, COVID really pushed the uh, neutering schedule back for veterinarians? Because I didn't. Uh, so oh. now I'm waiting until June till I can have uh, my cats neutered so they'll calm the fuck down. <laughs> Fucking teenage cats. I had no cats. problem. Getting a getting an appointment to get Mavis spayed. Well, I called the other day and they're like, "Yeah, we're booked out for like three months." I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's fine. I'm actually releasing a song called "I Was a Teenage Boy Cat." Uh, it'll be coming out <laughs> soon. It's pretty simple. It just has one line that's said twice. It's just gonna be "I was a teenage boy cat." I was a teenage boy cat, and that's it. That's the song. Really quick punk song. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> so. Reminds me of the songs they used to have on like Space Ghost Coast to Coast with Brack and stuff like that, where it's just like, what? Uh, I fucking grew up on that show. That show was great. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where was your Moltar impression? You hit Brack and you hit Zora. I, I, but there was I no don't Moltar. Really have a Moltar? No. I. I would have. I had. I've never actually tried to do Moltar. Uh, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, if you go and start researching David, and you go down this rabbit hole, and you find his YouTube channel, he's got a video on there. Uh, and it's like 10 minutes of him doing a hundred impressions <laughs> and he hits classic Looney Tunes, classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, Oh, I gotta see it. He hit, uh, uh, fucking, uh, Don Knox. Like it was fantastic. <laughs> wow. And then there was like in space goes coast to coast and, oh, it's so good. I highly recommend hunt down this video. If I if you just type in his name, you'll find his YouTube channel, yeah. and you can also watch him sing "Let It Be" done by characters from Warner Brothers. Yep, "Let It Sweet. Be," <laughs> uh, which is fantastic. And then you also can see him doing uh, monologues as the Joker for like the Killing Joke and stuff. And uh, 
Really bringing that Mark Hamill. Thank you. Really fucking hitting it. I'm a huge I, fan I, of I didn't, wanna, too, so. I didn't want to do a full on Mark Hamill though. I, yeah, but I'm my my joke is very much inspired by Mark's version because I think he's the best version out there. It's just like it, it, hearing any other voice for Joker that's not Hamillish to me just doesn't feel like the Joker. It's just it's like hearing Bugs Bunny with a different type of voice. It's just like oh, no, that's not Joker. Yeah, that's fair. Though I will say. Your your uh, Dark Knight Joker for Heath Ledger was also very fucking thank spot you. on. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, it, I, it, I went down that. It is hole. fun to like when I when I do Joker monologues. I like to use both voices because it totally changes my delivery. Yes, very much so. I also watched your audition reel, which uh, made me die laughing. Uh, <laughs> he, he starts off doing Jim Carrey's The Grinch, and then. At one point, he transitions into this white boy talking about bitches and hoes, and uh, oh god, yeah, this is for in living color, yeah, like <laughs> back in the day, because it, it was it was they had seen um, one of the producers there had seen my uh, my impersonation video, and they contacted me. He said, "Hey, I just uh, this is back about ten years ago. They were trying to reboot in Living Color." And he's like, "Yeah, uh, I just showed this to Marlon. He's he wants to know if you would be interested in like putting together some kind of character demo." And I never really thought of doing my own characters, so I, I just threw all those together in like ten minutes. I was like, "I'm just gonna just improv a bunch of shit <laughs> and film myself doing a bunch of weird characters and." And they, it looked like they were going to go with me, and then the whole thing fell through. It just, I, I think Fox just passed on doing In Living Color, and I was like, ah, oh, man. Yeah, that sucks, because uh, you also, as someone from the South, your your Southern accent was really good. Talk about, uh, I lost toe, I only got nine toes, and then I, dro- I drove my truck into a salt mine or some shit, and I was just <laughs> fucking dying. I don't even, that was just me just, being weird I don't, I don't even know i can't even remember what i said it was just me just yeah i'm going to do it all come on here <laughs> just making shit up it's just like i, I just I, improv's weird for me it just i just turn off my brain and whatever comes out comes out yeah i saw that you said uh you don't do method acting which as as someone who uh occasionally plays the joker that's good uh we don't need anyone else playing the joker to go method We've done it twice now. It didn't work out either time. Uh, one lost his mind, and the other one started mailing people uh, dead animal bodies. Yeah, don't do method. Condoms. We're done. We're done with that. We're not doing yeah. that anymore. Uh, but you said for you, you literally can just turn it on and off and just go. Yeah. Yeah. It's just as as soon as I understand the character. I I can easily just go into it. Just it might take like a. a a few seconds for me just to get it in my head. I might have to do the voice real quick and then I can be in character. Yeah. And I, I also saw that, um, you were really raised in a religious house. Your, mm-hmm. your mom, your mom is terrified by fall of the house of Usher, which I'm assuming is the Roger Corman, Vincent price one. Yes. Uh, fantastic movie. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know Not why scary at all. <laughs> that's the one that scared your mom. I could understand if like yeah. she got scared by the, the mask of the red death. Yeah, but that one I'm not. I'm not 100 sure why. But um, me neither. Being being that, um, ha- have they seen Terrifier? Do they do they just <laughs> ignore that part of it? Well, if my mom was still around, I think she would be like, "I love you, but I can't." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I would totally understand because I I think my mom could only get up to the pizzeria scene and not even through the pizzeria scene, and she'd be like, "Okay, that's." I love you. You're great. I love you. I'm sure you're fantastic. The rest of this, but I can't watch anymore. My my dad seated. He he enjoyed it. So he 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 actually would watch horror films. So but we just didn't watch him in our household is a, because my mom was so afraid of him. So my dad would stay up late at night watch him on TV. So that's how he got because my mom would always go to bed early. But you know. Okay. I because yeah. I was curious about that because you all I also saw that you said uh, with uh. uh your drama class for while you were a senior in high school, y'all all went out to see Scream 2. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe in that you said that that was one of your first like experiences watching a horror movie. 
It was. It was because it, it was my mom that made me scared of horror films for a while. So I was kind of a little chicken shit because of that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. My best friend was always like, Dave, come on, man. Stop being chicken. Let's go see one. Like, oh. And it was, it was when I was doing a, a show with a local community theater. You know, it's when Scream 2 came out and they're like, hey, let's go. And there was a girl in the cast I had a crush on. I'm like, well, I can't chicken out in front of her. So I'm like, okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And I had the most fun. I was like, yeah, I'm totally, I, I don't know what my mom's been talking about. These things are so much fun. <laughs> but I do want to say, let's thank your mom, because I you also said she kind of pushed you into getting into acting. Mm -hmm. So huge shout out, because without that, we wouldn't have had you as Art the Clown. And yeah. I don't know if I could live without Art the Clown. Like, to me... <laughs> Art the Clown is like the next evolution in the the silent slasher. Like to the point like you you have two distinct kind of slashers really. You have the silent antagonist and and the comical antagonist. So you've got Michael and Jason versus uh Freddy and Chucky. Mm -hmm. And we haven't when it comes to like modern icons for horror the, the biggest one really was uh, Adam Green's Hatchet with Victor Crowley. Right. And which, which I love Adam Green. I'm a huge Adam Green fan. Um, and then we on this podcast right. reviewed Terrifier because one of our listeners, Heather, who now does her own podcast also, wanted us to do it. Yeah. So we reviewed Terrifier and I was just fucking, and it was my first time watching it and I was blown away and I was like, this is the evolution of the silent protagonist. And one of the things we were blown away was your eyes. <laughs> you act that entire movie through mime, which I, I've heard you, you have prior experience with that before going into it. And you actually got the role for art by miming a kill as your audition. Correct. Correct. And so, but when I, I could just sit and watch the facial expressions all day because they make me laugh, but it's your eyes that scare the fuck out of me. <laughs> like you'll go from smiling. And then as soon as you go, like in the pizzeria scene, when you go from smiling back to frowning at her, it, it's not even your mouth. It's your eyes. You can see the distinct change in your eyes. I don't know what you true. did to get those eyes. Yeah, right. It's like that, you know, you've got that playful, childlike to an absolute animalistic killer instantly and yeah that, that was actually that was, that was what drew me into it the first time that i watched it like you know that opening sequence and whatever i was just like eh, okay you know and then in the pizzeria when it was like the 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 changes the instant changes mm -hmm. in how you were acting that that's what drew me into the movie. I was just like, okay. And then, uh, you know, right after that, the next part, you know, where you're, you know, you're stabbing this dude in the face with a knife. I was just like, I am sold on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can thank, you know, Damien also for that, because sometimes he gave me really good direction. Sometimes he, 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 he sometimes gives me eye direction. I would say he's like, okay, I need bigger eyes here. I want dead eyes here. I'm like, okay, cool. And I know exactly what he means. So he's, he's got a good vision for that, all that kind of stuff. So it's like we, we play off of each other very well in that regard, I, I guess, because we, we both bring our own ideas to it. And we just go back and back uh, back and forth like that. So it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I really who I and I know uh, he said he's got plans for a trilogy and then after that he's done unless you know people are like hey bring us terrifier but I actually would like to see what he does next after doing a terrifier trilogy I would really like to see what he has next and I really want to see what you've got coming next because you, you oh, besides yeah. terrifier 2 you've got the dark offerings coming up correct um which if I remember correctly was about almost like uh, tr trading a demon or something what was it yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty much something like that. I mean, like, I, I, I really don't want to spoil too much of it. Plus, I don't actually know a whole lot too because I, I'm only in for a little while and stuff like that. So they, they wrote us 
fun little part for me in it, which is really cool. But uh, it, it's a it's a great premise though because it's something we did during the pandemic exclusively over Zoom. So everybody was interacting not face to face, but you know over computer screens the whole entire time. Well, I love internet horror. I've been a huge fan of things like Unfriended and Host, so that is 100% up my alley. Yeah, I'm, I'll be down for that, too. Jerry got me into that kind of thing. When the first time I watched Unfriended, I was just like, I didn't think this was going to be as amazing as it was. <laughs> oh, our friend Felissa yeah. Rose is in this one. Yeah. She's yeah. also in Felicis. Terrifier, too. Phyllis is in that, and she's also uh, in in a few others. Yeah, so she's she. Phyllis is the hardest working woman in horror right now. I think we. She's one of the a nicest great people person. I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, she's yeah. a great person. We love her because uh, she. I met her a few years ago when uh, Adam Green was touring um, Victor Crowley, aka Hatchet Four, <laughs> and I met her uh, at a convention here and. Uh, hit it off with her really well so much so that when we went to go watch the premiere of the movie uh at this horror convention i actually me and uh an ex-girlfriend of mine actually sat at the table with her and caroline williams and watched the movie with them and then two years later when i saw her again at days of the dead atlanta she remembered my name everything she she just she's just perfect Oh, Phyllis is just, everybody loves her. It's just like, she's got such a great personality. I'm like, and I'm amazed how she can remember everybody's names. I suck with names. I remember faces, but names, I'm just like. (laughs) Exactly. I I don't know how she does it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, it's, she's, she's just a very special person. I just absolutely adore her. And. I love that we're able to work together in all these projects and stuff like that. So it's like, it's, it's great. It's <laughs> the most surprising thing to me about her is like, my kids were there when we were at days of the dead Atlanta, my kids were there and she just like, she sees my kids and she just runs up and she's just like, Oh my God, y'all are so cute. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just watching, you know what I mean? And, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she was real cool. She's very real. She's a very real person. She she's not pretentious at all or anything like that. She she's one of those people that also at the after parties is hanging out, you know, with everybody at the the parties and having fun, doing karaoke and all that. So I'm always happy to see that when other people when some of the other celebrities do that. So yeah, you've also got a uh, stream that you're in. Yes. Um, which uh, another big name for horror, Jeffrey Combs is in it. Yes. Nice. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, Felissa Rose is in that one too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a lot of people. There's a, some more people that haven't been uh, listed yet too. So I I can't say. But oh Fair. my God, it's just it's been. I, I'm not necessarily in scenes with all these people, but I've been able to be on set with them to just because I like to watch people work because that's how I learn. And there was like one night, my, one of my first nights on set, I just asked, can I can I just come in and watch? And they're like, oh yeah, sure. So I just sat there and I watched Jeffrey Combs do a scene with uh, Tim Reed. And I'm like, I, I'm just like, this is like a master's class in character work. I'm like, this this is fantastic. <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious. What Like you grew up watching horror movies, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what's it like to see you know, to be in person with some of the people that you've seen in horror movies before you like oh my God. really jumped I, off. I, I, I feel like I have like imposter syndrome. Like I don't belong there. I'm like, I, 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 cause I'm, I'm on set with these people I've watched for decades and have loved their work and I've learned from them. And I'm like, I, I don't compare to you guys. I'm like, you, you guys are the masters. Wow. I feel like just an apprentice right now. Well, I hate to break it to you, David, but you have stepped into that box, my friend. Well, <laughs> it, it, uh, thank you, but it's it's I it's I still haven't wrapped my head around that part of it yet. It's just it's I I feel like such a newbie in so many ways. I'm just like I I'm like I I don't feel like I deserve to be on that level with these guys. It's going to be interesting in 20 years when when you have young actors saying this to you on set <laughs> when they're just right. like, I saw terrifier when I was 15 and it just scared the living shit out of me. And 
you know, and I met you at this horror convention because because that's one thing about being in a horror film, especially if it hits big and gets that cult like status, like horror will will prop you for years because yeah. we just take care of you. Like you're in a movie, we're there. You're at a convention, we're there. Yeah, and it's, then you have amazing. everyone growing up from it, then directing movies and being like, "Come do this cameo." Yeah, it's it's an absolutely amazing thing to experience. It's just I I did not expect that at all. Like you know when Damien and I first started doing conventions, we're just like, okay, we'll see if we have anybody actually come over to our table. <laughs> and we were just floored by the response we got. I'm like, because at the time, it, our first few conventions was before we even released on Netflix. So it's like just the people that had just seen us on like you know. Amazon or had actually bought the, the the copy of the film. So but it's like that that even then we had a, a pretty big turnout. We're like, holy crap, this must be catching on with people. We did not expect that. I can't remember who out of the three of us watched the movie first. I, I think it was me. But I can't remember for remember I, who. I didn't see it until it came to Netflix. I did yeah, right. I didn't see it until we and recorded didn't see the it episode. Until we reviewed it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think it was me. And like I said, I was blown away. Um, it it was is it, it's it's one of those movies that from from just looking at the image, you know, on Netflix or whatever, and seeing it, and I just I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was, you mm-hmm. know, because it's just like you know you you at that time when it came out, you had this trend of of you know killer clown stuff you know you had people right. walking down the street and you had people you know hanging out in bushes and stuff and just showing up at people's houses and being caught on security cams and all this other kind of stuff and so i thought it was just going to be you know a movie that kind of came in with the wave of that you know we got people dressing up right. like clowns all over the place and doing dumb shit you know here's a movie for everybody to watch it kind of flows into that trend so i was just like eh, you know whatever i'll give it a good watch mm-hmm. and then like i said when i watched it i was just like wow this is one of the greatest killer clown movies i mean clown slash mime you know right. movies for me since it well thank you it's like we were kind of worried about that because we started filming it in 2015 and that was even before they started filming it and we knew it was coming out and at first we were really wanting to get it out before it came out because we we're afraid that that would like People were like, oh, they're just trying to be it and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, God, who knows how people respond to this. It's also like right when Clown was had come out and um, uh, uh, 31 was supposed to be coming out, too. So we're just like, oh, God, how are we going to – I don't know if how we're going to be able to compete with you know all these other people. Like, are we just going to blend in with the, the rest of it? Everybody's going to think we're just some low-budget knockoff or something like that. But we're like, okay, well, we'll just do what we're going to. We set out to do. We're just like, we're we're just gonna make what we think is gonna be a fun film, and let's hope other people catch on to it. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we didn't well, expect this response. Thirty one right. is not not competition. Don't worry about that one. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say, <laughs> that, Richard Drake was amazing in that, though. Oh no, the actors were fine. Yeah. It's just if. It's like someone wanted to make a knockoff Rob Zombie movie, and it just so happens that Rob Zombie was the one that made it. Mm-hmm. It just, yeah, it just I didn't. Hated it. it, I don't know. For Rob Zombie, like, because I'm actually a big fan of um, his Halloween remake. Right. I actually really enjoy it, even though it, it basically is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre version of Halloween. Um, I really enjoyed it. I actually liked Halloween too, but. Terrifier definitely stood out from that crowd because there was a personality to Art the Clown that you just did not see in any of these other ones. It was it was almost a mixture of Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger together. That it, it's well, a silent protagonist, yeah. but it's all in the face. Well, that that's like kind of what we set out to do with the character too. I kind of look at Art as basically he's a love letter to the slasher genre. Because he's every little bit of every slasher icon that came before him. There's little bits of pieces of every single one of them. You know, Mike Myers, Jason, you know, Freddy, Chucky, Pinhead, Leatherface, you know, Jigsaw. All those guys are inside of art. And he's just like a mixture of them. 
And also, we we even though we were a killer clown movie, we weren't trying to be a killer clown movie. Where it's like, uh, you know, he's not using a bunch of clownish type things. You know, he's not using squirting flowers or you know balloon animals and stuff like that. He's actually using real. He, he's he's a slasher that's dressed up like a clown, but he doesn't necessarily act like a true clown. Yeah, and that's part of that thing that's that's terrifying about him. The the fact that you honked a horn and it didn't make any noise that bothered me in the movie. <laughs> like I was just like, I really like. Even his fucking horn is silent. Are you kidding me? This <laughs> creeps me out. And then just uh, uh, there was the oh the scene where you're holding the baby doll. Yeah. And and the the crazy lady comes by and starts loving on you. Yeah, that shit was intense. And oh, that's a great scene. And I then, love that scene. Uh, you wore her her top skin, <laughs> which I, I also remember that this is. I, from an interview gold. that was back when Terrifier first came out, one of my friends did an interview with you back then. Um, mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, um, originally, like you weren't going to do it completely naked, but you were like, "Oh right. no, no, I'm going to do it completely naked because uh, Catherine did her whole scene naked. I'm going to do mine naked. Like, right? Like, so I'm stepping up here." Yeah. And it, it just seemed fair, you know, it's like you because I've I've always been very uh, insecure about my physique because I am skinny as a rail. I was always so is I was. Oh, yeah, so am I. I, I wonder which I, one of us has oh, bigger yeah. arms. My arms like the biggest part of my arm is my elbow. <laughs> I was always so insecure going to the beach or the pool, taking off my shirt and all that kind of stuff. I got bullied a lot because I was so skinny. So that's why I was like, oh, I don't know who wants to see my skinny ass naked in this. But I, I looked, I was like, you know what? That would be really freaky, though. Just that, that idea that this guy just skins somebody and puts their skin on top of his skin. He takes off his clothes and just wears this other person like that. I'm like, that is a freaky freaky thing and i'm like yeah you know what i if if catherine can expose herself in such a vulnerable state like she's doing for that kill scene then yeah i sure as hell can do it too yeah it was fantastic and as someone who has went through the exact same thing with being bullied for being extremely skinny i have no muscles i have low testosterone like mm -hmm. they're just saying shit i can do about it no nope. I, I I I was bullied the same fucking way. The only thing I looked out is is uh, emo and hardcore got real popular, and skinny guys <laughs> and girl jeans became real hot. And I looked yeah. out. <laughs> I rode that fucking wave. Oh yeah, yeah, same here, same here. I was like, whoa, oh wow, all of a sudden I'm hot. What what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like all of a sudden, like fucking, we're over here fucking hot because like. We get the we get the sex V on our hips without having to work out. Like it's just there yeah. because we're fucking tiny. Oh yeah. It's now I'm starting to have to work out because I, I'm in my forties. It it's it just now I'm starting to get a little little pudge happening. I'm like, oh no 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 no. Now no, I, I call it pudge. Other people are like, oh dude, that's normal. You're still underweight. I'm like, I don't care. I see this little bit of pudge, and I'm like, no, this has never been here before. I, I have to get feeling. rid of this. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And then I have Jay and Kenneth just looking at me all pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right? Yeah. I, I get the same looks from people like, David, shut up. You're not fat. I'm like, I know I'm not fat, but I, I'm starting to get some, and I don't like that. That's not supposed to be there. That's never been there before in my 40 plus years. Yeah, meanwhile, <laughs> I look like I swallowed a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Um, but. Yeah, so there's so many scenes we could go over, and we've already reviewed the movie. Um, but I do want to say, uh, Catherine, who plays Dawn, I mm. love her. I loved her in Return to Newcomb High, uh, oh, Volume God, 1 yes. and 2. I got to see both of those in theaters with Lloyd Kaufman, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, she was fucking hilarious in that movie with her fucking duck. Oh my god, that was that was such a bizarre movie. <laughs> it really was. Like I, I really like I I I really like that movie. Yeah. But it's just fucking weird. Oh, um yeah. 
I was but, like, no wonder she was totally fine with the, the hacksaw scene. She she had done trauma before that. She's like, oh, this is nothing. <laughs> yeah, I she's already love Lloyd Kaufman. Oh, yeah. the things that she did in in that movie. Oh my god, fucking are weird. But uh, yeah, that and of course the the scene in Terrifier that everyone fucking talks about is her scene. Yeah, which is brutal. Uh, I I did want to say I took y'all like. Four, she was hanging up for like four hours because she didn't want to get down. She wanted yeah. to stay in in that moment. Mm-hmm. We we had a rig that where we could swing her down and swing her back up, so she would like lie horizontally. So she was just lying down. It, so, but we could only film her upside down for like thirty seconds at a time because it's just so dangerous to you know be upside down for extended periods of time and she still even got sick after this because of all that because the constant blood rushing to her head and her, she had some inner ear problems for a little while oh that had yeah. sucked because she was also filming something else at the same time she was filming terrifier yeah 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 her and jenna both were yeah yeah jenna had to leave us to go literally two days later to go film bye bye man so I was like, wow. She's like, yeah. And she like, when we're on set, she like gets her like, um, her, her, her ride details. She's like, I'm going to be in a car with Doug Jones. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up right now. Tell him I love him. <laughs> Give me his autograph, please. Yeah. 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 Oh, fucking perfect. So, uh, with Terrifier 2, y'all did an Indiegogo. It was very successful. Um, Ran into some problems with the merch, but I've heard y'all have got that fixed. Yeah. Um, and of course, everyone was supportive of it. Uh, even I'm interested to see this this merch that's going to come out that apparently cannot release until the movie releases because it has spoilers. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, y'all are just teases. Y'all are. Just... Oh, I know, I know. We're so horrible. <laughs> oh, I can't like, and just the fact that there's like an hour and a half of this movie, and I finally will get to find out. Because my biggest thing with watching Terrifier One was at the end of it, and I was just, I was just like, "So Art's supernatural? Was he supernatural the whole time? Is it something that happened towards, like the end? Like, like was it a fake <clears throat> suicide? Like a fake pop no. gun? Like what the fuck is going on here? So I can't wait to find out. Yep. I want to oh, know there, we, more. We definitely address the supernatural elements. We're not heavy handed with it though, so he's not gonna be like warping around and like he doesn't have super duper strength or anything like that. But we we address we do address it though. Yeah, because if there's one thing about Terrifier One that I hope to see in Terrifier Two is even if it's not tons, I I want to know more of the background mm-hmm. of art the clown i would like a bit more understanding and i know okay we probably won't get a huge a huge dose of it in part two if he wants to do a part three because you got you right. got to save something right right and but, that that's exactly it it's like we don't want to just shoot our load all at once I, I i you know we we might if you're observant enough you, we might answer a few questions but i think we'll also introduce a lot more questions too so there's there's some characters that come in that you're gonna be like what <laughs> Well, I'm curious about something that that kind of goes into this. Now, is the introduction of the character of Art the Clown in All Hallows Eve, is that canon with Terrifier, or is Damien Leone taking that and kind of setting it aside? I, I think he's kind of just setting that aside. I, I think that's more almost kind of like a proof of concept type of thing in a lot okay. of ways. Yeah. It's like, this is, this is the true Art the Clown movie. So, right. Yeah. I just didn't know yeah. whether any of that, I mean, because that was a cool introduction, but yeah, you know, you, know, you, you, you took it to a whole new level. And so that was the reason why I was just like, okay, with the success of Terrifier, the obvious success that's going to come from Terrifier 2 mm-hmm. and what you did with the character and took it and ran with it. Yeah. You know, I was just kind of, I was curious about that, whether he was just going to be like, okay, that was its own thing, you know, yeah. that's not part of this. I, I've suggested some things to him about how we could probably possibly tie the two together but i don't know if he's going to implement those or not it's you know it's his ideas i i i like to bounce we bounce ideas off of each other all the time but you know ultimately it's always going to be his final say i got you yeah also uh brilliant choice of having a slasher use a gun that was so fucking unexpected yeah yes He's just like, I, right, I, I'm I done. <laughs> <laughs> we we knew I, I like that night we were filming it. I, I even commented, I was like, this is gonna really 
piss some people off, and it's also going to make some people very happy. I think it's like, this is going to be such a controversial moment, and I love it. Because I think horror films like this should be controversial. They should have those moments that people are like, wait a minute, what? Well, Terrifier has that multiple fucking times over. Um, yeah. And I think that's I the reason... It, I thought it was great. <laughs> why it's so good. Terrifier is so refreshing because it, it breaks rules, it bends rules, it does something more unique, like... like talking about like the killer clown films like it stands out above those because it's just so fucking different than all of those like mm -hmm. it's one of the most unique movies I I've watched in modern times especially when it comes to the slasher genre which is tired in itself so when you have something right. that brings a fresh air to it like art the clown does that's kind of how you know okay this one this is gonna go far like people are going to want more of this and I, I tell you, though, it, it is hard, though, because, you know, as you say, so much has already been done. So it's hard to find things that are new. It's, it's that's a challenge. <laughs> I, I see. I think with this, it, it I really like, you know, the style that was going with it. And again, how you did the character. But also, I think the medium between the humor and the seriousness, mm -hmm. it's equally great on both sides. So it's not a movie like, don't get me wrong, Scream is a classic, mm -hmm. but it's not a movie that where I feel like Scream really leans on the humor because it's a meta movie, so it really leans on the humor. Right. And see, this one is not that. And and talking about the 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 when you bring out the 1911 and shoot the girl in the face, I was like, that, that was really what brought that home to me because to me that was... It, it, as crazy as it was, it was still amusing to me. So it was like that that dichotomy right there between right. the humor and the seriousness in one spot. Because and that's uh, that's something that we really work hard on, and we we walk we try to walk that fine line because we don't want to get too campy with things. And we we will do different versions of some scenes sometimes where um, like Damon has his his serious way he wants to do it or the he, he's like okay this is gonna be really scary if we do it this way then he says like okay david why don't you do some of your shtick and see if you can come up with anything too and we'll see what works like a gr good example of that is the um the scene where i have jenna tied up to the chair and i bring out you know the the saw and the 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 the, the hatchet and stuff like that and i'm taunting her with it we did that but we also did some things where I was clowning around with the different weapons. Like uh, there was like this long rod that had this big, huge spike on the end of it. So I treated it kind of, I was doing the old Johnny Carson golf swing bit with it <laughs> at, her, at her kneecaps. And they're like, oh, wow. Well, you know, they liked it, but like they're, they're thinking it's like for this moment in the film, that's probably too funny. So right. that's, yeah. So I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's like, but that's the thing. We're, we're just, you know, We'll film so many different takes on something just so we have options and see what works best. I think it's really good to have a lot of options. So you're like, okay, well, should we have a little bit of humor here or should it just be f flat out just scarier and freaky? Yeah, because like in that scene, again, going back to it, the, the, the scene with the gun, I kind of, when I was watching it, the two things that I got at the same time was one, the absolute coldness of the character. Mm hmm but at the same time, the, okay, fuck this shit, I'm done, and shot her in the face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all in the same time. And I'm like, that is great. Yeah. That was and, awesome. And he also uses the gun as a slasher would. He doesn't just, you know, two in the head and now she's dead type of thing. He, he, he first injures her so she can't get away. And then he goes over and just mutilates her face with it. Yeah. Just disfigures her. And, and I'm a gun guy, so, you know, uh, that was one of the th great things that I liked about it was the, the, the gun that you used, the 1911. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a 45. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to do some damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, and, and that whole scene to me was great. It, it was fun to do, too, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet knew it was. Kenneth was going to, to be able to name the gun. I knew he wasn't just going to say yeah. the gun. And I knew he was going to, because normally, like, on movies, like, if you look into IMDb trivia, if it uses a gun, it'll tell you what type of gun it is. Mm -hmm. But in Terrifier, it doesn't. So I didn't know it. 
So I was right. like, I bet I learned this gun tonight from Kenneth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I have to say my favorite take was the whole thing with me just whipping it around and shooting that first time. That It just felt so badass. And that, that smoke coming out of it was the real smoke from the, the shot. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. I was like, that was fun. They're like, let's do it again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep doing this. This is fun. It's so badass. I like this. Yeah, I actually own one of those, so um, I really, really like that weapon. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can understand, you know, I mean, I don't own guns myself, but, you know, being, a, being able to do what I've done in these films, you know, I'm like, I can understand, you know, that, that you know, that that feeling you get from shooting, you know, going to a range or something like that and doing target practice. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can, I can see that rush that you get from it. So much fun. Kenneth shoots yeah. guns. Jay and I shoot insulin. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that works i shoot guns i just don't own any oh that's fair I yeah shoot other people's guns yeah. jay and i aren't allowed to have guns uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's fun because like damien you know here he, his killer uses guns damien is very anti-gun in that way so it, it's it's kind of funny it's like well, yeah maybe th- that that's why he puts it in there. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, he's anti-gun, so why not have a slasher icon use one and kind of, depending on the person that's watching, yeah, might be an anti-gun kind of thing. I mean, the old Lethal Weapon movies, if you catch it when you watch them, there's a whole lot of anti-gun stuff in there, oh, yeah. but yet there's, there, you know, you got uh, Riggs and Murtaugh just shooting away all the time, but there's all kinds of anti-gun stuff in those movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I'm like, I'm from the South, so I'm, like, I'm used to the gun culture and stuff like that, so I'm like, and like, I remember my grandfather, Lieutenant Colonel in the Army, is like he, he would take out a shotgun, go out in the backyard and shoot snakes. Yeah, but he was like, he, he taught me gun safety at a very early age. He's like, when anytime he would go out, there's like, you go inside. You were not to be around me when I'm doing this. This is for own safety, and this you will not touch this, and blah, 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 blah. You know, he, he taught me at a very young age about all of that, how to respect a gun. And I personally think that's something that, you know, uh, if you're going to be in a household that has them, that you should definitely do. Like my kids, you know, they know absolutely that if I do have any of them that are outside of the safe, they're not allowed to touch them. If they see them, come tell me anything like that, you know, because mm-hmm. they know that if they do, it's, it's very dangerous and also that they'll be in big trouble. So either also, way. Also, but, Jade yeah. can tell you pretty much every part of the gun. I've, I've, <laughs> I've watched Kenneth go, what is this part? She's like, it's this. And fucking, yeah, she, she can, can, you know what you just did? She can do the same thing with the rounds, too. She can, I can set, you know, I can take a handful of different rounds and throw them on the table, and she can tell me what where, what size they are, what which of my guns they go into, everything. And she can shoot a bow and arrow better than me, even though her oh, and I use God. the exact same fucking bow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I, I still haven't been able to do anything like that, as far as I can say, in, in Terrifier to use a bow and arrow. And I used to, I used back when I was a camp counselor, that was my favorite thing to do at camp, was when we had archery every few days. I was like, yep, yeah, because as a counselor, I could, like, the, the archery counselor had his own compound bow, and so he would let me go over and use it. Uh, oh, God, I had so much fun. I, All right, Damien. <laughs> Damien, you heard it. Terrifier 3. <laughs> Yeah, that would Art the clown cool. has to Rambo oh a a bow shot. <sighs> that I would be so on cool. One of those old like fifties uh, Indian and cowboy feathers before mm. he does though. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be so cool, man. Just oh, like man. see him fasten it behind his head, and then he reaches down and picks up the bow. <laughs> that would be awesome. It's fun. I love. I used to love doing uh, archery. Oh my gosh. And like one one time, like one of the counselors had a crossbow, and he brought that in. That was so much fun to use too. And just like it's just, ooh, I, I, even when I play video games, if I, if I have a choice between using a bow and arrow or a gun in a game, I'm gonna use the bow and arrow. It's just more fun for me. One hundred percent. I do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so, I remember like Perfect Dark when when you got the crossbow in that game. I'm like, okay, this is all I'm using. <laughs> oh, Perfect Dark, such a good game. Oh yeah. By the the way, remake they did of it was really good also. I have to say this real quick before I forget. At this current mo- moment right now, I suggested earlier to my kid's mom that she watch Terrifier. She's putting it on right now. Nice. Oh 
Perfect. I this love it. This is her it. first time watching it? Yep, it's her first time watching it. Oh, boy. <laughs> She's seen Scream and The Conjuring. She'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, because those are close. I'm not oh, talking about. Yeah. I'm not talking about Jade. I'm talking about Nikki. Oh, Nikki's watching it. Yeah, I told Jade she couldn't watch it until she was like 15. So, okay, that's fair. Oh that's fair. wow, yeah. I I want to show my mom Terrifier. Actually, now that I think about it, because she won't watch Hellraiser because she's scared of Pinhead. Mm-hmm. But one time she was like, "Well, put on another really scary movie." So I put on Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> so next time I think I've got to make her watch Terrifier. Um, yeah. Because I think be it's, okay. I want to say Terrifier is still streaming on Tubi. Yes, it's still on Tubi. Um, but well, I, if you want to watch it, guys, if y'all want to watch it without advertisements, I own it on my Amazon. I will give y'all the login information. Uh, I will also say this. Uh, we need another Blu-ray release. I didn't, I, while doing yeah, some real. research, the Blu-rays is out of print, uh, both of them, the regular and the steel wow. case. And they're both going for a minimum of fifty dollars each. Jeez, yep. those things sell so quickly That's when we do we that. Get for sleeping on it. Yeah, it's like when we did the steel case. That thing just sold like hotcakes. Yeah, I tried to get the steel case, and it, it sold out before I could get it. Um, oh, it's amazing! And well, some stuff that, like they've done overseas, especially in Italy, like Cinema Museum, the like, the things they've released over there are unbelievable. Like, yeah, they put all these extras inside of it that you know we've never even released here in the states. I'm like, wow, it's crazy because like I I'm a big commentary guy and I wanted to <laughs> I was like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna order the Terrifier Blu-ray um, and listen to the commentary uh, before we do the interview. Yeah, and I went and looked and I'm like, holy shit, this is gonna be at least fifty dollars. Wow, um, I was like, damn. Hopefully, I was like, well, hopefully with the buzz of Terrifier 2, uh, maybe uh, there can they, we'll get a another, maybe a small print run or something. Mm-hmm. Um, or a two-pack or something. Or a two-pack yeah. later on. Or Shudder gets off their ass and uh, gets in the art the clown bag because Shudder, this <laughs> is per... If you, sh- Look, Shudder, I love you, I, and I love that you put all the <laughs> classics on there for me. Except for that really bad movie I watched today that had Tom Savini in it. I don't know why you <laughs> made me watch that movie, Shudder, but I did it for you and it was really bad. Um, I did it for you, Shudder. I did it all for you. But if with you trying to be the biggest name in horror and not wanting to go the fear net dot way, you really do need to get on things that not, not are just new directors new faces but the new icons and, and art the clown is the new icon so i really feel like shutter needs to get on that back really i agree bad i i mean yeah i'm also I pushing agree. for them to get uh season three of holliston by adam green made make that happen yes i fucking love holliston it needs to, <laughs> it needs to go down uh, yeah but, i agree man they definitely should get in the business of you know they're already doing shutter exclusives they should definitely get in the business deeper if they're going to want to be the top horror streaming. Otherwise, they're just going to get swallowed up by the, by the other big ones. That's true. It's, and that, that's what's so cool now, that, you know, because at first, like, we were talking about, you know, Terrifier 2. It's like, well, you know, we were looking at the content of it. It was like, well, I doubt if we'll ever be able to put this in theaters because it's pretty much NC-17. So we're like, uh, but, you know, streaming, you know, has gone up so much now, especially because of the pandemic. So I'm like, I'm I really don't fear, you know, that kind of stuff anymore. Because I'm like, yeah, it's great. He's like, this would be perfect for something like Shudder or Netflix or whatever. You know, it's like, yeah, this that way you don't have to worry about those the ratings as much. Or hear me out. We get it on Disney Plus and art becomes a Disney princess. <laughs> I, I, if a xenomorph can now be a Disney princess, why can't art the clown? Oh my god, that would be amazing. I mean, that would be so awesome. Oh my god, art the clown finally speaks for the first time. It's just him doing uh Disney cartoon impressions. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill you now. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> nice. Oh, wait, your goofy's really good too. Of course, of course, there. I'm gonna hang you upside down naked. That's gonna be all kinds of fun. Yep. I'm gonna die. Of course. 
Well, you're bleeding a lot there. Hey, Maxie! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yep, it's settled. We're petitioning Disney. I have found, I have found your new YouTube thing. Just do impressions as a murderer serial killer <laughs> for YouTube. Uh, I actually almost got fooled earlier when I was looking for YouTube. Uh, I saw Art the Clown on Omegle. And I was like, oh, my God, yes. I was like, OK, let me look at this. And and uh, when because there's also someone another channel that's like we the clown or something yeah, that just some different people have done this on Amigo, not just one guy. Some different people have done Art the Clown on Amigos. Um, those I love these videos. Yeah, some of some of the are really cheap costumes and then some of them are so fucking spot on. Yeah. That I literally was like, is this David? I can't tell. And I thought, no. and it's it's the eyes. The eyes are yeah. always what tell me it's not you. I can look at the eyes and go, nope, that's not him. Um, <laughs> but I was just like, so going down the rabbit hole, just trying to find more information over the past couple of days. Watching some of that shit, I was just like watching people make uh, like bus sculptures of Art the Clown. And because uh, there's actually a, a huge community of people that were making Art the Clown stuff and selling it. I know y'all finally had to put out a thing saying, hey, yeah. we do love it, but you got to understand. We do, we do love it, but it's just at the same time, it's like this is this is Damien's baby. This is this is his thing. And he, he, he deserves to be able to get a cut of all of this. Yes. We're not saying you can't paint a picture of art the clown we're yeah. saying hey stop putting out unlicensed shirts yeah like especially stuff that you know we want to actually put out ourselves you know it's just like or like you know there 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 have been people have made action figures already and they're selling them for like 200 dollars a pop and i'm like and that, you know that's pure profit for that person too none of that goes to damien Correct. I actually did see a uh, like 3.5 inch GI Joe uh, style uh, mm -hmm. art the clown, and I was like, "That's dope!" and everything because yeah. I have a buddy who who does customs like that. Also, he did a Nintendo uh, Jason Voorhees for me yeah. uh, a few years ago. In fact, some of his stuff has wound up on the show The Goldbergs. Um, oh wow! Uh, and so, he's made custom gifts for. Um, the chick that plays Sansa Stark, she married one of the Jonas Brothers. Uh, one mm -hmm. of his brothers contacted him to make action figures of them for their wedding. Wow. Um, so he's done a lot of stuff uh, that's been out there now that's really dope. And all that stuff is really dope. And um, while me being from the Godzilla fan base, there are a lot of uh, – in Japan, they have like this kind of unwritten rule where like, okay – there's one day a year, we have a little convention, one day a year, mm -hmm. you can come and sell extremely small print runs of your custom figures and designs for Godzilla and other kaiju. Hmm. Uh, it, it's really cool. The industry was like, if you just don't do it for the rest of the year, we'll let you come do it here. And yeah. it's a one day thing. And they do very small print runs. Like it's like five of a figure, if that at most. Yeah. Um, so there are ways around it, but at the same time, you you do have to understand that while yes, they are doing this because they are creative people, it's still a business, and yeah, and like I will still bitch to this day that I will never get a Adam Green's digging up the marrow too, because of how many people pirated digging up the marrow, yeah, and we're open about it, and it's just like well, if you love horror. Stop doing that. When you were a kid, you spent the $5 at Blockbuster to rent them fucking movie. You could spend mm -hmm. the $5 to rent the movie off Amazon or Vudu or wherever. Um, or you're, I know you're horror fans, cause you, so you all like physical stuff. Buy the fucking Blu-rays yeah. when they come out. Um, yeah, that's what happened to me. I went looking for the Blu-ray. I, I couldn't find a copy of it that wasn't astronomically expensive. And so I was just like, and then it was sitting on Tubi and I don't like watching shit with commercials anymore. Cause now streaming, you hardly ever have to do it these days. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, okay, fuck it. I got on Amazon and I bought it on Amazon. Yeah. I mean, it's especially when it's, you know, it's independent studios and stuff like that, as opposed to like Disney where they have billions upon billions of dollars. Anyway, it's like, this is, it's like Damien is independent 
<laughs> this is not a big studio. It's like we, we had a, a limited budget even for Terrifier 2. So it's like the money that he makes off of the merchandise, he's putting back into the films so he right. can make more. And so they're like when you buy the official license stuff, you're helping fund future films. And when I saw the post, that was my first thought. Was I was just like, okay, cool. If everybody gets on board with this, we may get Terrifier 3. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because yeah. so much of Terrifier 2 is funded by the fans. I would say about 75% of Terrifier 2, if not more, is funded by fans. Yeah, and doing uh, your crossover promotions with, like, Twisted is a fantastic idea. Because most people listen to Twisted mm-hmm. fucking love horror movies. Uh, and, and, you know, so them giving you also promotion to their fans, because I know y'all went to Astronomicon, you, you did, mm-hmm. uh, photo ops as Arthur Clown, you even had blood on you still because y'all came from, uh, <laughs> yeah. filming. Uh, and I think at the time that y'all did that, uh, was right before y'all stopped filming for a little bit because of, uh, because of COVID, but I, I'm assuming y'all went and finished up whatever you needed to finish up since it's. It seems to be wrapped for filming and just in editing. Yeah, yeah. We just had like a few more scenes to do, two big kill scenes, basically. So that was kind of, it, it, in a weird way, COVID was kind of a blessing for us because Damien was able to really, because like one of those kill scenes is the first kill scene in the movie. The other one is the big, huge kill scene that happens in the movie that we think is going to probably rival the hacksaw scene. Yeah, so there Damien, was... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That was I say. There was something that was said in the interview uh, mm-hmm. about a body count that I, I won't say just because I don't want to spoil. Because I, I, when I was watching the video, I was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think Damien should have let that slip." Right. Um, so, and, but it got me really excited for yeah. for a certain scene um, that is going to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. It's like. He, he wanted these scenes especially to be a, the best they could be. And it, it, that was like we had actually started filming the beginning of the big set piece kill scene in the movie before the pandemic happened. And what we filmed was great. It was going to be that was going to be pretty tough. I mean, like one of our crew guys had to excuse himself from set because he was getting nauseous. He was, nice. just like, I, he was like, oh, boy, this is too much to watch. And and because of the pandemic, Damon was able to really sit back and re reassess these two kill scenes. And he's like, you know what? Let's just totally, you know, bat for the fences right now. Let's go full out with these things. Let's throw everything we have into them. Now we have the time. I'm going to spend this time fleshing out these kill scenes more, doing more with them. And now I have the time to really build the prosthetics. I, I originally really wanted one to build for these things. And so he did. And so we scrapped what we had originally filmed for that kill scene and started fresh. And I think what we filmed is far superior. It's like, this is going to be, and it took a week to film this scene because there are just so many elements to it. So much, so much prosthetic work. Yeah. And And he does the prosthetic work for the movie. Yeah. He does Um, it all himself. Cause I know he said it takes like, uh, Three hours to do yours because every it's not replaceable. Every time you have to take off your prosthetic, they're ruined. Mm-hmm. You have to start completely over fresh. Correct. Um, which I, I don't know if I could sit for three hours with someone applying shit to my face. So, bravo I was an extra to you. on a movie. I was on an I was an extra on a movie one time, and you, in my opinion with the the couple of times that they had to do it to me and granted mine wasn't extremely extensive but I, w- I was sitting in the chair for like an hour and a half and i was on i was in atlanta somewhere and uh, i was in the chair for like an hour and a half and to me now i don't know with with you know like david having to be on there three hours every day if eventually it would get tedious but for me for that couple of days it actually went by faster than i expected it to yeah, it does. It's, it's really strange how that happens because, you know, I'm in the chair for like three and a half hours, sometimes even more, because it depends how much, you know, blood he has to put on me because we have to match it up to what we had already filmed or how if I take battle damage, then I had we have to do all that kind of stuff, too. So it takes a while. But 
that time usually flies by really fast. It's because uh, Damien has a great taste in music. We, we play a lot of 80s music and stuff like that while he's doing that. And then we just have fun conversations with each other. And so we, we spend all that time, you know, chatting and just entertaining each other. So it, it just flies by really fast. I was yeah, gonna that was add, pretty I, much the same way with me. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So, what? Uh, speaking of music, what is some of the music you like? Hit us, hit us with some artists. We're gonna, we're gonna judge you. Oh yeah, I, I'm an oldies. I, I like you know anything basically from the '50s through like the early '90s. I'm a big fan of, especially when it comes to rock. Big Queen fan, especially. But I'm also a musical theater nerd too, and love jazz as well. Because you know my my grandmother was a contralto, so she did a lot of jazz growing up. She she actually gave up a whole uh, singing career to be a mom. She was asked by, I can't remember the name of the group, but it was a very well-known music group back in the 40s that wanted her to be their lead singer and tour around. And she's like, no, I I, I want to settle down and get married. And so she gave that up. But So I have appreciation for that music. I, I come from a family of musicians. I used to play piano myself. I mean, I still do, but I just don't play it nearly as much as I used to. It's Gosh. funny how that had to happen. Yeah, yeah. As I was say, uh, Kenneth plays guitar. I say I never learned how to play guitar. I had an uncle that was actually a guitar teacher. He's like, I can always teach you. I was like, well, I was also occupied with you know theater and you know piano at the time, so I, I, I didn't have enough time to put another lesson in there as well. So yeah, I, I'm about seventy percent self-taught. Oh yeah, musical yeah. theater is fun. I I I, I did uh, the Newsies. When I was in high school, Disney's the Newsies. That oh was yeah, great. yeah. That's I got a to great play Crutchy. Oh Crutchy, yeah. <laughs> the the role that uh, Max Casella played in the movie. Yep, uh, fantastic yeah. movie. That movie actually holds up really well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a great one. Uh, I love that it, movie. It won't top my favorite musical because I think uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch is just like one of the greatest fucking musicals ever made. <laughs> uh, it's just fucking shot out, and I love it. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big Les Mis. I, Les Mis and Jesus Christ Superstar are two of my favorites. Yeah, both are really good. Yeah, I haven't watched Hamilton yet. Hamilton is good. I keep meaning to. Yep, I would love to play King George in Hamilton. That would be a lot of fun. I would love to play King George in real life. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, at this point. <laughs> Now, which which King George? Like third, the Mad One, or oh, the Madness of King George? We're one hundred percent going there. Okay, yeah, okay. Like this is also the Madness King George is a fantastic movie. Uh, oh yeah, for anyone who's never seen it. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, hopefully we will get Terrifier two coming in October. You've got uh, two other movies. Uh, that are supposed to come out. Actually, I think one of the, uh, the darkness one, I think was like April 25th. Dark, uh, the dark offerings, I think is like April 25th. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. Um, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. I want to say it's supposed to be in theaters, April 25th. I am going to check and see if it plays anywhere close to me, which, which yeah. I live, uh, near Nashville. So probably, Wow, I didn't even know. That. I'll have to ask Marcus about that. So, so it, it's kind of funny because all, all of us Terrifier people were involved in Dark Offerings. We're also involved in Stream. So it's like we're basically building our own like studio system in a weird way, if you think about it. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, in theaters April 25th, 2021. So Wow, the, the Dark Offerings, really? Yes, uh, that's I according to IMDb. This. So... Oh, I'll, have, I'll definitely have to ask. Hopefully, uh, Holy shit. that will be good. Uh, ho- well, not that the movie will be good, but hopefully it comes out near me and I will go and see it. Ah. Um, yeah, I live near Atlanta, so um, hopefully maybe I'll get a theater somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Well, AMC's around here are open up. I, I'm excited about seeing it because there's so... I, I don't really... It's like It's one of those... Those uh, movies, so the only part of the script I saw was in the scene that I'm in. And I've heard like just a, a rough you know, description of the rest of the movie. So I'm like, oh, I want to see what all happens, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, it's uh, the movie sounds um, like a 
a mixture of things like the ring and it follows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very, very fucking interested in that. Uh, yeah. Stream uh, currently says it's still filming. Um, yes. And that Got one it. seems like it's going to be a, a family horror that happens on a vacation. Um, the, 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 the description of it's kind of a little all over the place. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I will take a vacation horror movie with Jeff. Oh, it's, 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 a, it's a cool idea. It's just like because they, they have an idea for a trilogy for this film. So it's just, where they want to go with things is really cool. <laughs> yeah. So and I then, a, I, yeah, I have a quick question for you. Mm-hmm. What's it like? I've always wanted to ask an actor this. What's it like watching yourself? on the screen do uh, like when you're watching when you're watching the movie after it's edited and everything else like that and it's out there do you watch the movies with yourself and if you do are you sitting there thinking the whole time could i've done this different or done that different yes. or you just enjoying it <laughs> i i am very much i usually hate to watch myself because i i am so critical of every little thing i do i, I think terrifier is the first time i've ever watched anything i've done both stage wise and film wise where i sat there and go oh i'm really happy with what i did except for one little bit one scene i was like ah i wish we could go back and reshoot that part but <laughs> <laughs> it's just like oh well it's it's the scene where i'm i'm choking uh tara and it, if you look my hands are not even touching her throat at one point it's they're like i'm forced choking her basically and it's because i thought they were just doing from uh, just a face shot of her so i was putting my hands there just for reference for her right. but the the close-ups they had gotten of that part for some reason or another, they did not come out well. So they had to use that shot. And I'm like, ah, son of a. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to say one of us brought that up when we do, when we yeah, did we our did. episode on yeah. it. I remember that. Oh, it drives me. it's my plan nine from outer space moment. I call it. I'm just like, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Damn it. Ed Wood is, is a, an American icon. Oh, I know. But this this, but you know, you see those moments in the movie yes. where it's like, yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> It was like it knows, a lot of people don't even notice that, but I noticed it as soon as I saw it in the theater. I was like, "Ah, son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> damn it! Damn it! Damn it!" And all, all people around me are going, "What?" Well, I'm like, "Okay, you didn't see it." <laughs> yeah, no, I feel the same way. Whenever I'm editing the podcast and I'm listening back to it, if I say something that's fucking wrong or dumb, and I'm just like, "Yeah, fuck, I should edit this out, but I can't because it's an integral part to oh, what's going I'm on." A perf- Perfectionist. I'm just like, and I, I'm even like that on set. Like, I can tell when a, a take's not a good take, and I can tell when we finally get the take that works. I can, I can just inherently feel it. I'm just like, ooh, that felt good. And that's usually when you got Dave's like, yep, yeah, let's let's keep going. It's like we we all we have that. Damien and I are so cued in on each other. We we both know when that's the take. We're just like, okay, we we'll do one more for safety, but that's the one. Yeah, you know what I would love to actually see is, um, uh, which actually, saying this, you may not be able to do it at all because of COVID, but if y'all actually went and did a uh, a tour of the film, uh, like Adam Green did with Victor Crowley, yeah, that would be well, fucking Damien wonderful. wants to kind of do that. He That was a, one of his original ideas, was to do a road show with it. Kind of, also kind of like what Kevin Smith did with uh, the latest uh, Jane Silent Bob movie. That yep. would be awesome. I will. I hit me up. I'll get you talking to to Ben over here at uh, Full Moon uh, Theater, which is also a tattoo shop and a fucking haunted house. Uh, <laughs> we'll get you. Well, I'll I'll tell him to hit y'all up, and y'all can come fucking show the movie here. Oh, it would be so much fun because it's like you know, because we know it's probably not going to be seen in theaters because just the content is pretty. You know, it's a hard R, if anything. But um, it's but it's one of those the, those those movies you want to see in a theater with people because it's like it's that group experience. It's like these these are the type of films you have to see with a big group of people to get the full full effect of everything. Yeah, say I and I think you could. You I mean, like I said, I go to this place called Full Moon. They they have a one room theater uh, there and that on Friday and Saturday nights. They show old horror movies, um, and they do everything fully licensed. They pay 
everyone they have to pay to do all of it so it's not like that's cool they're just no uh because they do make movies themselves they're they're friends with lloyd kaufman they've worked with kane hodder yeah. um so if y'all ever want to come and do it in nashville uh full moon's where to do it it's right outside nashville and hermitage uh cool. it's a fucking great place to do it uh people will show up there every weekend lloyd kaufman showed a movie here back when Fangoria uh, put out um, Puppet Master of the Lilith Reich. They came <laughs> and, and did one here and they brought like the blade puppet from the actual that was used in the movie. Holy crap. Um, so I got to I got to hang out with that. That was fucking dope. Uh, so, I mean, there are and there's got to be more places throughout the United States that are. That oh, yeah. Have this I same mean, kind of I setup. don't have any connections like Jerry apparently does. <laughs> <laughs> I'll at least go see the movie. Yeah, I fucking Who know knows? people, man. Who knows? Well, if y'all do it in Nashville, I'll drive up there. Oh, yeah, we, we also have some ties in with you know Kevin Smith too. Some people that are involved in Terror Fryer too that know Kevin. So I'm like, man, who who knows? Maybe Kevin could even like give us some ideas or something like that. So nice. That's true. That would be, that would be awesome. I do love Kevin Smith, and I mm. can't wait to see, actually. I watched that uh, blockbuster documentary on Netflix today. Yes, I watched it the other day. It was really good. Fucking oh my god, that was great. so nostalgic. I was like, just when they were talking about the smell of blockbuster, I was like, yep. Yeah, blockbuster I used to, did have I that used to work there. Like, yep. <laughs> I worked at Blockbuster for a few years, right, be- right before the end. Uh, I think I ended up. Up. What a great yeah. job that had it been. Uh, it had its moments, man. I mean, it yeah. was really cool. Like, like when movies would come out, we would we would get copies of the movies like two weeks before the release date, which is yep. good though because you can recommend it to people and you're like, right. Hey. So yeah. I got to watch the movie like two weeks before the release date. We got to do the same thing sometimes with video games until all the online stuff started. That's great. Yeah, we got to do that, and yeah, it was really awesome. And then I got to I, I got to rent like up to fifteen movies a week for free. Wow. So I was, that's all I was doing. And this was right before my daughter was born. Yeah. Like I was working at Blockbuster when my kid's mom was pregnant. So that's all I would do. I was just come home with stacks of movies and just yeah. watch and watch and watch and watch and watch. That's all well, we you're do. doing research for the job. So that they, I think they probably prefer you to do that because that yeah. way you can give better recommendations to you know, the, the guests. Yeah. yeah. The only bad thing about that job was, you know, living in the South yeah. at the time. You know, I've got long hair and tattoos and a yep. nose ring and a long... Go- and at the time, it was a goatee. Now it's a full beard, but at the time, I had a long goatee. So, yeah, uh, I caught a lot of hell from upper management about that. Oh, I, I remember back in the day. It's, it's back when I was... I, I call it the year of Jesus for me. It was when I did Godspell. I played Jesus in that. Then I did Jesus Christ Superstar later on that summer. And so I had to grow out all of my hair and I had the, the facial hair and all that. I told it completely different and i i and this is when i was living in alabama and it's like i got so much you know looks from people like what what what's with your hair there boy right exactly <laughs> like, i'm playing jesus <laughs> come here charles manson yeah I'm like no I, I'm, I'm playing jesus man we were in a we were in a restaurant one night and there were cops in the restaurant and i overheard them say something Along the lines of, man, that dude looks like Charles Manson talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, come on, guys, really? It's, but it's crazy. It's growing crazy. up in the South, man. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I was born in Alabama. Yeah. Where where from? Uh, Dothan. Oh, Dothan. Yep. 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 Uh, I'm familiar. Kenneth's in Georgia. Up. Yeah, I grew up. I, I grew up in Heard County, Georgia, which is Franklin, which is okay. about thirty minutes. Uh, well, actually, about fifteen twenty minutes over the line, beside Roanoke, Alabama. Yeah, I know where that is. Oh yeah, I've yeah. been all over the South. I, I know all that area. <laughs> yeah, man. So you know exactly what we're talking about. You grew oh, up in a yeah. small town like that, man. Like the town yeah. I grew up in only had one red light, and oh yeah. We didn't even have any major chain restaurants until oh. I was probably like, I don't know. I think I think we finally got a Hardee's when I was like 14. Yep. That, that's like the, the college town I went to in Alabama, uh, University of Montevallo in Montevallo, Alabama. The literal geographic center of Alabama. It would, they did not have a McDonald's until the year before I went to college. 
And I understand they cut shut down all of the schools for the opening of McDonald's that day. Wow. It was a it was a school holiday for McDonald's. That's crazy. That one hundred percent sounds right. Yeah, it was it was just su- such a small town. I had maybe two or three lights in it. That was it. It was just like wow. <laughs> and even now to this day, I think we've got we got the Hardee's, we got a Subway, and a Piggly Wiggly. Pig- and the Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. Hoggly Woggly. Yep, yep. And then, uh, oh, we got, no, they closed it down. They closed down the uh, the Dollar General. They closed oh, it down. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that would have been a heartbreaking moment for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. But they still got the mom and pop pizza place, right? Yeah, they still do. My mom still orders pizza from that place. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And, that uh, food was good. And then the barbecue place has been there for since well, before I was born. Those will be there forever. Yeah. I really think that they probably serve people, but I don't care. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am like, because like Huntsville, like right outside of Huntsville's Decatur, and that's where they have Big Bob Gibson's Barbecue. And we had an uh, offshoot of, of, of Gibson's, bar- our Gibson's Barbecue in Huntsville. And Gibson's always won like the barbecue contests nationwide. And so I am very, very picky about my barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, yeah, I grew up on basically the best barbecue in the nation. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, people are like, oh, we have great barbecue. I'm like, I- I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> well, this place, the, this place in the town I grew up in, it's literally like a wood shack, yeah. you know, and with, a, with a barbecue sign out and there. You know, and it's got to have good barbecue wins like that. Yeah. And, 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 and you've got, you know, the, the smoker outside and mm-hmm. it's literally like a shack. You can't sit inside or anything. There's barely enough room for the two people <laughs> that are usually in there. And then they've got a cooler. You know, that they probably yeah. jacked out of the grocery store yeah. and they go and they buy, you know, go and buy individual, you know, canned drinks and they put it in there and yep. that's what you go get. Honestly, yep. I can't even enjoy barbecue unless I feel like I'm going to accidentally get shot because of a shotgun yes. wedding happening at the barbecue place. If, if the barbecue place looks fancy on the inside, I know it's not going to be good dark barbecue. I'm just like, no, nope, this is not going to be good. It's not gonna you be guys good. couldn't take me to one of these places when I was down there asking. <laughs> you <laughs> had never eaten Waffle House. Oh my! You God, have that's... to have Waffle House when yeah, you're in the south. So we had, had to take you to that, uh... and at least five different meals. One of them could have been these places. You're like, I don't know. We don't really have anywhere to eat around here. Oh, <laughs> Waffle House! Oh, All right, man. man. I miss Waffle House. <laughs> Jay, the next time you come down here, I will take you to JJ's Barbecue. Damn straight. <laughs> You may I die. Will take you down there, because uh, as you walk in, you're just gonna see a, a chainsaw that says "Saul's Family." But like <laughs> I said, it's a shack. You just walk up onto the little porch where the window is at. That's it. I like shacks. <laughs> I like shacks too. Like, with me, anytime I'm on the road and I see a Waffle House, I have to go to that Waffle House. I don't care where I am. I'm just like, it's Waffle House. I have to hit it up. And the cook better be standing outside smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, and fighting with the waiter when they're back inside. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. Um, of course. So, so, David, are you based on the West Coast now? No, I'm still up here in New York City. Okay, you're in New York City. So yeah. I'm just curious. that uh, Obviously, they don't have Waffle House up there. Is Chick-fil-A in New York? They finally got one here, yeah. And it was, a, it was like, it was ridiculous because so many people had never had Chick-fil-A before. And so, like, when it first opened here, they had lines around the block. Wow. It weeks They're and not months that yeah i mean at this point I've, I've eaten it so much like i'm a red member on the app i've got <laughs> probably seven thousand points at this moment i don't even yeah. want any more chick-fil-a right now oh i i uh i still love i am i i, I love chick-fil-a i you know it's like it, i i know there was a you know, time you know, there you know where you know people are like okay you gotta you know since you're you're in the arts and everything you 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 have all your gay friends and everything. They're like, okay, you gotta, you gotta, um, you can't do Chick Fil A. And I was on tour with Grinch at the time, and we we stopped at a mall one day, and we go up to the food court, and a lot of my castmates all went to Chick Fil A, and I'm like, okay, well, if you guys were okay with it, then I, uh, I'm okay. They're like, we, we we were like, yeah, we know, fuck them for like their views and stuff like that, but this food's so damn good. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> I will stick to my Zaxby's. The yeah. Lord's chicken. <laughs> yeah. Zaxby's is good stuff too. Every Fuck time... the Lord and his chicken. Zaxby's yeah. is, <laughs> is for Satan, and that's where I'm at. <laughs> and, and I don't know what it is about it. 
it's a hit or a miss. Every time I eat Zaxby's, it either fucks up my stomach or it doesn't fuck up my stomach. It's a hit or a miss. Every single time Cheyenne eats it, it fucks her stomach That's, up. Y'all have... Everything I eat goes... Y'all have too much <laughs> Jesus. It's my fuck up. It doesn't matter what it is. Just stop having so much Jesus in your stomach. <laughs> so and you won't have Jesus. this problem. Right, yeah, well, you know, I've got a lot of Odin in there these days. So. <laughs> I'm a good altar boy. And... We discovered Joella's hot chicken. And if you've never eaten that, mm. oh, my God, that shit is great. It's Joella's hot chicken. They just oh, opened one up. Oh, man. It's amazing. Just the name of it just sounds good. I'm just like, oh, that sounds like that's got to be some good chicken. It's, they put they put hot sauce in the batter. Oh my god, it oh, is so like, good. It sucks is now I got acid reflux problems, but I'm like, okay, that's that's a night I know I'm gonna have to take my medicine. <laughs> oh, exactly. I take omeprazole every day, which is, mm-hmm. I think it's like per, what what is that? What is that? Prilosec. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah, I take that every day. I'll double it up. Oh, when I eat Joella, it's just so I can eat it. Yeah. Do, just, do you, um, y'all just want to yeah. start a new podcast where every week we talk about food we've eaten? Because oh <laughs> I'm down. Oh, I, I just, like when I was in Atlanta on tour, that they um, had uh, chicken and waffles down the street from us. I, I think it was uh, Patty LaBelle or something like that, her chicken and waffles. And oh mm-hmm. my God, it was so good. Oh my God. <laughs> was that when you were on Days of the Dead? No, it's when I, when I was doing Grinch as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just down the street from our hotel, and I'm like, I was like, oh, this sounds like it's good. And I was like, I, I have to go in because I'm like, I'm back because it, 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 at that point it had been a few years since I've been in the South. It's after I moved here to New York, and I'm like, I am craving some chicken and waffles. And you know, a lot of people that were on tour with me were not from the South, so they did not understand. I'm like, okay, you're getting an education. <laughs> <laughs> And I love it because, you know, this is Atlanta. And I was like, I think we're like the only white people in there. And everybody's kind of like, who are these people? I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm giving them an education in good food. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Southern food tastes great. Yeah. Clog your arteries. Yeah. Oh, everybody's like, oh, my God. Like, and you have to order sweet tea. Trust me. Get some sweet tea. <laughs> that was yeah. the craziest thing when I went to the West Coast, man. I go over there. And, I, you know, I'm used to being down here. So I'm in California and I'm like, okay, can I get a sweet tea? And they're like, the sugar's on the table. No, like, you no. can't put sugar into cold tea. That's not you how can't. this fucking no. works. That's I can't stand it. I mean, I have to drink half and half I tea learned this now. because but... of my wife. Oh. The only place in San Diego where you get legit sweet tea was in Kansas mm. City Barbecue where they filmed that scene in Top Gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was the only place. Where it's you, usually you, only barbecue places where you can get sweet tea. It's just like that's. that's it, an it was the craziest thing to me, man. I was just like, "What?" So the yeah. whole time I'm drinking soda, and then that was another thing that I noticed when I was over there. Like, Coke is a huge thing down here. Oh you know yeah, what I'm saying you got Coke everywhere over there. It was Pepsi everywhere, Pepsi products everywhere. Wow. Okay, this this actually makes me think of something fun, David. Here we go. Would Art the Clown drink? Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> We're going to play a little oh, game. Boy, um, I think... Jesus. I think he would get RC Cola. RC Cola. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, would he eat answer. Chick-fil-A or Zaxby's? Oh, he would definitely do Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah. The, the irony behind that. Just like, that would be amazing. Jesus chicken. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that actually would be good. Would he watch Comedy Central or the Sci Fi Channel? Home and Garden Channel. Home and Garden Channel? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that or the, uh, uh, what was the one with the, um, where they just sell shit the whole entire time? Oh, fucking, Home uh, Shopping CV- Network. Home Shopping Network. Yeah. yeah. Um, if Art played an instrument, what instrument would he play? The skin flute. Skin flute. <laughs> That's how I make my money. Um, <laughs> if if Art the Clown uh, was sitting down to watch a fight between Bigfoot and the Mothman, and he had to put money on one of them to win, who is he betting on? Boy, um, that's a good one. That's a good one. I, I'd say he'd probably put money down on the Mothman. I just, I just, I, I just looked up and I just got my Mothman poster in that i i bought off a artist recently 
And I was like, yeah. Uh, Art the Clown's going to go see Godzilla versus Kong. Is he Team Kong or Team Godzilla? Ah, <laughs> uh, God. He, he's going to be uh, Team Building. Team Building? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, I got one. Art the Clown versus any other horror icon. Who do you? Who would you want to see him go up against? I, I actually... Um... I thought of this earlier because I saw it just a few weeks ago. Uh, Nick Cage's character from uh, Willy's Wonderland because they're both <laughs> completely silent. I think that would just be hysterical. That would be, that would be an amazing. I'd watch the shit. Out of I that. would watch yeah, that just because, because both such badasses and just like seeing them go up against each other. That would just be hysterical. I would be stoked to see Nicolas Cage in a, in a good movie because if Art the Clown's in it, it's going to be a good movie. But I would just be yeah. stoked to watch Art the Clown kill that fucking character i'm so, i hated that fucking willie's wonderland movie so <laughs> fucking much but it's okay if nick nicholas cage as long as he doesn't ruin my new fucking scion sono film i'll be okay uh I, scion sono is a japanese director and he apparently okay. he's mostly made like uh not exactly art films but he's uh, he's made very fucked up films um especially in the horror genre Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently he decided he's doing a movie with Nicolas Cage and they filmed it and I'm just waiting for it to get released. Mm. And I'm just like, I really don't know what to expect from Sono yeah. and Nicolas Cage. So uh, as long as Nicolas Cage doesn't fucking ruin that movie, then I'm good. Um, but that is a good question. I would I would love to see Art the Clown just f- fuck him up. And the one time <laughs> I want to hear Art the Clown ever speak is just... The fuck do you drink this soda for? Can I just <laughs> have an awake. answer? It's his Keep break, dude. He needs yeah, a break. drink. He literally has a fucking Walmart shelf's worth in the trunk of his fucking car. <laughs> it's his favorite drink. I had a whole flat of fucking Rockstar in my fridge at the beginning of the month. It's gone now, but... <laughs> that shit is so bad for y'all. I, I used to do that with uh, the Reese's Cookie Cups back in college. I would go to Sam's and get a big, huge thing of that and just have it every month in my dorm room. Yeah, Reese's Miniature Cups are the reason I fucking have diabetes. Oh, I'm not even going to lie. Uh, would Art the Clown use a Android or an iPhone? Samsung or iPhone? Oh, Jitterbug. <laughs> Jitter, a pager. He would use a pager. <laughs> oh my fucking Jesus! Uh, I was just kind of like now I'm just kind of like it doesn't really matter what two answers I give you. You come up with something better. Except for Mothman, I was like, yeah, Mothman. Yeah, I, I mean Mothman's like... fucking. But it is very clear that Art the Clown knows how to text. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. He he does. I I I assume if Art the Clown has. Because in 2015, I believe Tumblr still allowed porn on it. So if he had a social media, I'm assuming it was Tumblr. Oh God, it would just that would you just know it'd be some vulgar, just like, oh my God, <laughs> totally, totally follow. It's, it's just him reposting all the fucked up shit that the coroner at the end of the movie is doing. Which yeah, uh, Jay, I didn't catch it until today, but you'll you'll know what's about. When the guy's like, well, once you've seen someone microwave a baby, all I could think about was that crossed comic. <laughs> yeah. That was the only fucking well, thing I could think of was the cover of that one cross comic where they had the microwave, the baby in the microwave. That's oh the one God. that you gave me signed yeah. by the artist. Yeah, it is. You know what the fucked up thing is? Is that shit like that really happens. Yeah. I know. My mom used to be a coroner. And so, yeah. I was just like, when 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 that comment happened, I was just like, damn, it sucks as shit like that really happens. Yeah, I, I think that's where Damien got that idea for that line from, was actually that's something that had happened, and he's like, I'm putting that in there. That's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. It was like, my mom used to tell me some stories of some crazy shit that she had seen. Like, the first time she ever come home, and she was just like, yep, saw what it really looks like for somebody to blow their head off. Oh, and she was, yeah, she what? was just like, it definitely ain't like it is in the movies. I'm going to bring this back to Sunshine and Rainbows. Would Art the Clown have a cat or a dog? Oh, God. I, he would have a rat. He would have a rat. I can see that. His, yeah. it, his rat. Art the Clown featuring his rat, Slob Ross. Yeah. Perfect. 
Uh, that's fucking great. Uh, and I think we end this with uh, Terrifier 3, Art with a Crossbow. We <laughs> needed to happen. Just like a hobo with a shotgun, Art with a Crossbow. Exactly. Like that. It's just Terrifier 3. The, I think it'd be the cool art to see of a, art, the art of crossbow with a slingshot. Slingshot, yeah, that would be fun too. Well, you could if you're just using like an actual slingshot in the metal pellets. Yeah. Well, wait, what he does is he slams fucking Nicholas Cage through the pinball machine, and then he takes he the, the fucking pinball, pinball out. Yeah. Shoots it through yeah. his forehead. <laughs> I always think of you. Yeah, growing up in the South, you probably know the the the, the gumballs that we called them, the little the round stickers that fell from trees. Yeah. yeah. And then using those in a slingshot. Oh. Just terrifier, like, filling someone's mouth with those. Oh. Just Art of the Clown just shoving those into someone's fucking mouth. Oh. Yeah, but see, the thing about it is, is if you were really going to do that, use those things, you'd have to add weight to it. So you'd have to yeah. cut, a, cut a little hole because they're hollow. So you'd have to yeah. cut a little hole and put, like, some BBs in it or something like yeah. that and just give it the weight. Oh, man, that would suck oh. so bad. God. Because those, those things are just a pain in the ass to step on accidentally barefoot. It's like, oh, son of a... You're yeah, right. Those and pine cones. <laughs> yeah. I if you get the you little up. tiny pine cones, man. Oh, God. We, we had those in my front yard at my first house when I was a kid. And sometimes I'd be... I, I, I remember using my slip and slide and I go off on the ground. And all of a sudden, I'm on a pine cone. I'm like, ow! <laughs> right? Oh. Son of a bitch. You know what would be ah. also great? If we just like remake scenes in, in famous horror movies, except we use Art the Clown, so instead of like in Lucio Fulci's zombie, it's a zombie versus a shark, it's Art versus a shark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, this is how y'all promote the new movie, is just doing fucking <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. I would like to see that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I have a t-shirt of the zombie fighting the shark. There you go. We just have Damien like make fucking uh, art fighting a shark or art fighting uh, like the alligator from Alligator 1980. Yeah. Just random promotional ideas that have nothing to do with the movie. Actually, you know what I think would be one of my favorites? It would be seeing Art's arm coming through the door and pulling that chick's head towards that shard of wood. Oh, there you go. Right before it goes into her eye. <laughs> yeah. Or just I, even if you take even more famous scenes like uh, The Shining and have it art in the wood coming through instead of Jack Nicholson. I think it'd be better on the with the baseball bat going up the stairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just have Tara with the baseball bat. Or I guess uh, wh- whoever the chick in the new movie is going to be. Because mm-hmm. I know it's it's uh, like her and I guess, I guess her younger brother on Halloween night. Correct, yes. Um, Because I actually went and double-checked on Terrifier 2 for something, and uh, one of my Supernatural questions actually got kind of answered by the description that's on IMDb. Mm Mm-hmm. So, now I want to know who the fuck the Supernatural entity is. Yeah. Who the fuck does Terrifier know? I didn't think think Art the Clown had fucking contacts like that. (laughs) It's those fucking three... uh, Dream demons from the end of that one fucking nightmare on Elm Street yeah. movie. Jesus. He's Lord hooked up. Wait, it turns out Art the Clown is now going to be the, the next Freddy Krueger. Uh, who knows? We'll find out. Uh, fuck, I'm I've excited. got actually Everyone's a lot excited. of theories. I've got a lot of theories <laughs> about the way, you, the way you could go about it. I mean, just like if you take a character and see how far its descent into madness has went to the point of what links would the character go th- go to to be able to continue the madness yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, I'm, I'm i'm very curious about this myself we we will definitely be reviewing that movie as, as soon as it's available to us uh we will be fucking rocking the hell out of that one oh and i can't wait i can't wait for it to come out so i can finally talk about things <laughs> you gotta come back on when it comes out so we can so we can be like all right so you didn't fight a shark yeah. <laughs> but you did this. Yep. Yep. I mean, the, the one thing you can tell from like the the the, um, the teaser trailer, I do use a flamethrower. So, <laughs> so that was that was an awesome day. <laughs> it's always a say, good day on that set. Fun. That was a good day. That was a very good day for me. My inner like ten year old was just having a field day that day. 
Oh, so you were, uh, me and Cheyenne were watching Vikings earlier today, and I, th- I was sitting there and I was looking at her and I was like, you know what? I think one of my favorite things, if I were ever to become an actor, would be all the crazy ass places you get to go to film shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, like, yeah. <laughs> thinking about you with the flamethrower, I'm just like, that would be amazing. Oh, Standing yeah. in some of these places where they film this shit would be amazing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's a story of Tom Cruise jumping out of a fucking airplane. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about, like, you know, just regular, you know what I mean? Just regular skydiving. No, this, he, he jumped out of something like a 727 or some shit. Yeah. And he literally did that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's like, can you imagine that, dude? That would be He's awesome. insane. I, you just know that the, the insurance people on these sets are going, oh, God, no, Tom, please don't. <laughs> please don't. Please don't. God, just use your double, man. <laughs> I, I'm assuming yeah. you don't get a stunt double. You got to you got to yeah, do everything. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. And a, a few times I would, you know, I would have, you know, someone come in and relief pitch for me from time to time because I, I was just getting tired <laughs> or something like or i have horrible depth perception so I've, I've had some come in just so because like we have a prosthetic that might only have be a one-use prosthetic and i don't want to fuck up the blow so i'm like i i would i would i will let some of the actually has really good aim and really good eyesight do this so it it looks the best we can get it that's fair nice. i have really bad eyesight and fucking i have no depth perception yeah. Oh, me neither. I'm just like I don't want to totally fuck up this shot. I'm <laughs> I'm slowly learning. You and I are very similar uh, physically. Mm-hmm. It sucks. It does. It's fucking <laughs> it awful. Sucks. It's just like yeah. I, it's like anytime someone throws something to me, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not gonna catch this. So yeah, that's the story fun. of Jerry's life right there. Oh, I, I'm nearsighted in one eye and farsighted in my other eye. So I see oh, it. Jesus on two, Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. Fucking suck. Oh, it sucks. It sucks. So I'm just like, please don't throw stuff to me because I'm like, ah. <laughs> so you're like, throw it at my good eye. Yeah. It's like, I hope I catch it. I hope I catch it. Take my strong hand. <laughs> yeah. That's why I never played baseball. I played t-ball because, you know, I had the T that the ball's on so I can actually focus and aim. But like I, that idea of something very hard flying at me very fast and I have a small little thin stick to hit it with. I'm like, nope. Mm-mm, mm-mm, bad enough, idea. I also only play T-ball. Yep. For the <laughs> same fucking reasons. Yep. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Nope. This, this could end up very bad for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It definitely shows an appreciation to your craft, though, where you're just like, okay, I want to make the best of of this shot. So, yeah. you know, I I know my own physical limitations, so it's yeah. like, let me let somebody else step in to make sure we get this the best that it can be. I, oh yeah, yeah. You can, you got to put ego aside when it comes to stuff like that. If someone can do it better than me for that one shot, just because that that's what matters the most is what gets filmed like what is going to be on film what's going to make it look the best and it's like if someone can actually is a little bit stronger than i am and can come in with a blow that's stronger than my blow for something go ahead i'm okay with that you know what he's right and inspired me kenneth wrap up this show do the rest of the hosting duties for me (laughs) (laughs) we've already established that we couldn't do this show without you jerry but neither of us have the ability to host so that is true how Uh, should we Okay, with that being said, um, before we get out of here, uh, Jay, do you have any last questions? Uh, what I, I what was your, your favorite scene to film? Not your favorite scene that, that ended up in the movie, but your favorite mm-hmm. scene to film in Terrifier. Oh, definitely the pizzeria scene. I just had that and riding the, the bicycle it was so <laughs> much fun. Those nights were so much fun because I get to just do a lot of goofy playing around stuff. And I, I love that. I love that right. kind of stuff. And Damien wrote some scenes into part two so I could just particularly do that kind of stuff. He's like, OK, he just like write the scene. It's like a loose interpretation of what might happen. But he's like, this is basically he's, he's like, OK, art's in this situation and art is art. And. Art does this thing. That's basically what right. So it's like I wouldn't even know until I got on set and I got to see what was in my surroundings, and then I would just come up with a routine and we would film it, and I'd just play around with whatever was around me, and it was it was a lot of fun. 
Nice. Uh, Kenneth, uh, dream you... dream character that you would play. Like, say, the, whatever movie is getting made, mm-hmm. and you get your pick of characters. Oh, easy. You That's... play Joker. Okay. Joker. That makes Joker. sense. And not really in a movie. I want to do them in a TV series. That okay. way I can I can spend more time with them just a two-hour movie. That's I can, fair. I, I can really flesh them out and experimental. I, 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 like, I would like to do what, you know, Mark Hamill was able to do with Batman, the animated series. I actually have a series where I could have, you know, like a live-action version of that where I could really, really spend time developing the character. Perfect. Uh, Kenneth, do you have any last questions? I've only got one, and it's just to piggyback off of one of Jay's questions. And you said that, you know, when you were looking at the script and you were getting direction from Damien and, and whatever else, that he would just basically say art does his thing, and then you would go into your surroundings and figure it out. Is is there spots in the first Terrifier where that it, like it's completely ad libbed? Like like for mm-hmm. instance, the thing with the ring and the gumball machine. Was that ad libbed or, or? No, that was in the script. But all the faces I was making was ad libbed. Okay. Yeah. A yeah, lot of that just... kind of stuff. Yeah. Just like a lot of my reactions to things, I would just kind of ad lib. Like uh, one of the best examples of that is when I uh, flick uh, Victoria off after she stabs me in the foot. That was not even, they had already said cut, and I was just joking around with Samantha when she was coming back to do another take, and I was just like flicking her off, like, oh, we got to do this again. And it just fits so well. And the crew just started laughing. So that, I was like, "That was a hilarious scene." Yeah, it, it's like Damien was even like, you know, he he thought, you know, it would be that would be so contrived originally just to have Art flick someone off, but it just happened so organically in the moment. It was like that's just great. It was, it was that little extra zing to the end of that scene that it needed. Yeah, it was great. That was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I've got uh, one question from a, a user that's definitely not an alternative email of mine. Uh, <laughs> Mallrat Brody at Yahoo.com wants to know, uh, is Art the Clown a virgin? <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. Oh, hell no. He's fucked tons of corpses. <laughs> Man after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> he's as vile as you can get. I mean, he, you name it, he's probably done it. It's just like he, necrophilia, cannibalism, all that kind of what? stuff. He's he's just evil. What episode was it that we had the the morals of a necrophiliac uh, conversation where we said three necrophiliacs go into a graveyard and uh, one says, okay, I'm going to go find a woman. Uh, the other one says okay, I'm going to go find a dog. And they both look at him and go, that's fucking disgusting. And then the third one goes, okay, I'm going to go find a child. And then the other two look at him and go, that's fucking disgusting. And he goes, we're all disgusting. (laughs) Man, when it basically comes down to it, you're all standing in a cemetery looking for corpses. Yep. Yep. So, (laughs) okay. Uh, Sorry. I I always think about that scene in... uh, mall rats where brody's constantly asking stan lee about fucking sexual <laughs> of superheroes yeah. and i was like you know what if, I, if i'm gonna have uh fucking art the clown on here and i really wish i would have thought about this when we uh interviewed uh nathan who played leslie vernon in behind the mask because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. i could have asked him that's uh, another great movie. that's another oh, great movie fantastic that dude is nice yeah. as hell Oh, Nathan's fantastic. We actually did a movie together before I moved up here to New York City when I was I was an extra in Huntsville. He filmed it right before I moved up here to New York. And, and we were at a convention at Pop Rock and Horror, and I'm like, you look so familiar. And he's like, you look so familiar. Like, <laughs> 20 years later, like, yes. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Yeah, he was a cool dude. Yeah, really cool dude. Love Nathan. Uh, with that being said... Uh, David, pimp yourself. What do you want the people to know? Where can they find you? What you got coming up? All that. Go to town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram under David Howard Thornton. I'm also on Cameo. So if you want me to do some kind of shout out for a birthday or something like that, I'm on there. I charge the same as I do at conventions for, uh, uh autograph and photo combo for that. Cause I don't want people to go broke just getting something from me. Um, as, 
and we've also talked about the movies I, I've done coming out, so I got that. And I also just got recently cast in an animated series for the Sesame Workshop, which is kind of cool. But I, oh, I can't that's really cool. I can't really reveal too much more about that, but I, I think it's really funny. Like, you know, my night job, I'm killing people. My day job, I'm doing animated shows for little kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that you have actually done some voiceover work in both uh, uh, video games and uh, animation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've done a lot of shows for kids, so it's it's kind of funny. <laughs> Though I get it, because like I said, I, I I went the deep dive of your YouTube channel and watching you do all these uh, impersonations. Uh, th- they were fucking great. Do you have like an impersonation you're particularly proud of? Like that's your favorite to do? Oh God, I have so many. <laughs> it's like choosing all my babies. It's just like I. I... I, 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 I love doing Crane from Ninja Turtles because I just think that's such a unique sound. Yeah, like, I'm you, did... you fool. You like those turtles that escape. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it's like, oh, this shredder. It's just, I love doing that one. Oh, you did the Bebop uh, one also. Yeah. That was super good. Mr. Shredder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love that one. Of course, uh, yeah, oh, you got Brady. You're a genius. Yeah. No. I love doing that. You know, it's like, <laughs> There's always my, you know, Don Knotts. You know. <laughs> Andy! <laughs> I, I personally love that being from the South. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's so yeah. good. Got to nip them in the bud, yep. Nip them in the bud. Grew up watching that show. Oh, so good. So good. That and, you know, Mr. Furley is like, Mr. Tripper, what you doing in that little apartment with those two girls, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you little just... funny fucking I, all i can think about is if you were in the art the clown makeup doing these voices oh i get that all the time on <laughs> I'm all the time all oh, the time I, there i hope there there's i know it kind of breaks the magic of the movie but like yeah the perfect bonus feature for a blu-ray would be you like doing it because i personally i love when like people are cutting up on a movie and yeah. like the bloopers and gag reels and shit like that. And I would love to see that for Terrifying. There's gotta be some footage out there somewhere uh, on either film where I, I'm just, I, I know there's like a, a some stuff on one of the behind the scenes on Terrifier where I'm on the bicycle and I'm singing bicycle race. And I'm, I'm, I'm basically doing Herbert the Pervert's voice from Family Guy. Like, I want to ride my bicycle. <laughs> I've got to get the yeah, Blu-ray. Nice. It's just it's it's like a combination of her the pervert and my Brack voice. So it's just kind of like, cause I love to do the Brack voice too. That's a fun one. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. I don't it's know if you. Spice ghosting. Oh yeah. If you've <laughs> ever heard the song uh, "White Kids Love Hip Hop" by MC yeah. Chris. I don't want to play Bomb Bad Racing. <laughs> <laughs> he has he has the guy that does the Brack voice because he uh, MC Chris used to work for Adult Swim. Uh, yeah. So he ha- he has the guy that does a bright voice on there during that song, and it's just the funniest fucking thing. Oh my god, that voice is just hysterical. Someone left the cake out in the rain. Oh no! <laughs> I was gonna eat that cake, but now I'm not gonna eat it because all wet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many? Okay, I gotta ask. How many? Uh, you've done a lot of interviews. How often do you get to show off your your impersonations on an interview? Not as often as I'd like. It's <laughs> they're just fun to do. I I just love to do them. Like, because that was my hope when I when I was like, anytime I go I go into an interview, I'm like, okay, I have to figure out some way to make this way different than any other interview mm-hmm. he's done. Which is hard since I haven't heard all these interviews. I've heard some, but not all. And I was like, okay, I don't know how many people have actually dived into his YouTube and found his impersonations. Right. But I was like, I am fucking talking about this. <laughs> it's just fun. It's something I've done since I was like first grade. So I was like, Goofy was my very first voice. So I was like, yeah. All it's right. all because a girl gave me a note during story time, which is a Mickey Mouse book. And it was a little note asking me if I'd be her boyfriend. I let a little <laughs> gorge look. And I'm like, oh my God, I did a voice. Oh. Fucking part. I love the uh, meme that goes around of of Goofy saying your dad, like Maxie, your dad doesn't have sex. He fiox. <laughs> <laughs> Maxie, now your dad doesn't have sex. He fiox. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking uh, perfect. 
Yups. That is that is how we are ending this, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for j- joining us on this episode of Kill the Cast. We are, of course, uh, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff on the Legion Podcast Network. Thank you for uh, joining us, David. It has been a blast. I hope we oh, got to, to bring up some interesting things to make your time worth it here for oh, you. Oh, definitely, definitely. That now, last bit right there totally made it worth it. <laughs> we, we, we now, no, uh, you can now picture Art the Clown doing a goofy voice, killing people and having sex. <laughs> uh, and also, you now know that Art the Clown is a Mothman fan. Uh, we Asking the hard questions here at Kill the Cast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we greatly look forward to uh, Terrifier Two. I greatly look forward to these other movies. I'm going to try to go see. If that one comes out on April 25th in a theater near me, I'm going to go fucking see it. Yeah, uh, I got I got to find out about that. Yes, cuz I I got I am here to support it. I'm all for it. Um we of course wish you the best of luck with the release of Terrifier 2. We of course will be here to help spread the word uh and by all means if you want to come back after it's out and and get into the details and tell us behind the scenes shit, we are here mm-hmm. for it. We love it. You can do the goofy voice the entire episode if you want. I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we greatly thank you for joining us. And thank you to everyone uh, who listens. We appreciate it. We will see you next time. Uh, I guess next time. I don't know if we're doing another movie from the list or if we're doing a horror coliseum. We'll figure it out and we'll let y'all fucking know. Because um, <laughs> I have been unorganized. Uh, but I think the next thing that comes out is an underwater kaiju from outer space episode because I think I've got to nice. record that though I can't remember I think we're doing Gamera versus Baragon so Ooh. second Gamera movie and I've got my arrow fucking Gamera set that god those fucking oh they can make a 60s movie look like it was made today arrow fuck me arrow do release terrifier one on blu-ray for me <laughs> just fucking <laughs> Throw your arrow money at it and make it happen. Or do Terrifier 1 and 2. I'm fine with it. Uh, So, yes, thank you for coming. We look forward to the movie. Um, We will see you all next time. Uh, Jay, Kenneth, do you have any last words for the people? Uh, I just want to say thank you, David, for taking time out of your schedule to come talk to a podcast that nobody listens to strictly for our entertainment. Yeah, I don't even release this. We just we just share it between each other. <laughs> Look what we did, guys. Yeah, we're just like, ah, we fucking tricked him. He he thought he was gonna spend the rest of his night playing fucking Hitman. <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah. It was good. Uh, Kenneth, do you have anything to say? Uh, pretty much the same thing, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for answering my questions, stuff like that. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I really do. And uh, for everybody out there listening. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you wait a day or two before you go fuck your corpse because you get a little, a little more of a squishy feeling. <laughs> um, We only bring you science here, folks. Oh, yeah. Science! <laughs> uh, we taught you how to survive Frozen, and now we're going to uh, teach you all the things Ted Bundy wishes he could have, but he was too busy trying to be a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> Evil All right. bastard. Didn't work out well for him, did it? Nope. Nope, but he looked good while he did it. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. We will see y'all next time. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a wide spread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. 
horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.